kurum kurum ve kuruluşların saygı değer katılımcıları. E, Ufuk Avrupa Okyanuslar ve Suların Restorasyonu Misyonu 2023 çağrıları genel bilgilendirme çevrim sistemlerine ilginiz ve değerli katılımınız için çok teşekkür ederiz. Öncelikle kendimi tanıtmak isterim. Ben Merve Polat. TÜBİTAK Uluslararası İşbirliği Daire Başkanlığı bünyesinde yer alan Avrupa Birliği Çerçeve Programlar Müdürlüğü'nde e, Gıda, Biyoekonomi, Doğal Kaynaklar, Tarım, Çevre Kümesi, e, ayrıca Okyanuslar ve Suların Restorasyonu Misyonu ve Toprak Sağlığı ve Gıda Misyonu alanlarında uluslararası tapas noktası olarak görev yapmaktayım. E, değerli katılımcılarımız, ülkemiz 2004 yılından itibaren dünyanın en büyük sivil arge ve yenilik programı olan Avrupa Birliği Çerçeve Programlarına asosiye ülke olarak katılım sağlamaktadır. E, paydaşlarımız ilgili programdan Avrupa Birliği üyesi ülkelerdeki katılımcılarla eşit haklarla yararlanmaktadır. E, son yıllarda paydaşlarımız Avrupa'dan çok sayıda kuruluşun dahil olduğu büyük konsorsiyum projelerinde sadece ortak olarak yer almanın ötesine geçerek e, bu konsorsiyumları koordine etmeyi de başarmış ve çok ortaklı projelerde Türk koordinatör sayımız büyük bir e, iğme ile artış göstermiştir. Bugün paylaşılacak detaylı bilgiler ışığında siz paydaşlarımıza projelerde daha aktif ve söz sahibi hatta projelerin koordinasyonunda rol alacak şekilde destek olmayı arzulamaktayız. Bilindiği üzere Avrupa Komisyonu 2021 yılı itibariyle yeni çerçeve programı olan 2021-2027 yılları arasında yürütülecek Ufuk Avrupa programını hayata geçirmiştir. E, toplam bütçesi 95,5 milyar avro olan Ufuk Avrupa programının 9 milyar avroluk kısmı ise küme altı, gıda, biyoekonomi, doğal kaynaklar, tarım, çevre alanına ayrılmıştır. Okyanuslar ve suların restorasyonu misyonu ise küme altı kapsamında oluşturulan misyonlardan bir tanesidir. Diğeri de toprak sağlığı ve gıda misyonuydu. Hatta onunla ilgili bir Mayıs ayının başında bir etkinliğimiz yine olmuştu. Dilerseniz yine web sitemizden bu kayıtlara ulaşabilirsiniz. Misyonun e, 2023 Okyanuslar ve Suların Restorasyonu Misyonu'nun 2023 çağrısı için ayrılan toplam bütçe ise e, 87.7 milyon avro. E, Okyanuslar ve Suların Restorasyonu Misyonu'nun amacı 2030 yılına kadar okyanus, deniz ve sularımızın sağlığını sistemik bir yaklaşımla eski haline getirmek, korumak, e, ve o şekilde muhafaza etmektir. Bu bağlamda misyonun hedefleri arasında e, deniz ve tatlı su ekosistemlerindeki biyolojik çeşitliliğin korunması, e, kirliliğin önlenmesi ve sürdürülebilir mavi ekonominin karbon nötr e, ve döngüsel hale getirilmesi gibi spesifik aksiyonlarda yer almaktadır. Ayrıca e, okyanuslar ve suların restorasyonu misyonu kapsamında okyanusun dijital ikizi e, yapısı aracılığıyla e, okyanuslar, denizler e, ve tatlı sularla ilgili verilere ve bilgilere erişimin genişletilmesine yönelik e, eylemler de yer almaktadır. E, bu yapı yenilikçi, kullanıcı odaklı ve interaktif e, araçlar sunarak okyanus bilgisini vatandaşlar, girişimciler, bilim insanları ve politika yapıcılar için hazır hale getirilmesini hedeflemektedir. E, misyonumuza ait 2023 çağrısı 17 Ocak 2023 tarihinde başvuruya açılmış olup 20 e, Eylül 2023'e kadar açık kalması öngörülmektedir. E, 2023 çağrısı kapsamında desteklenecek olan tüm projeler tek e, aşamalı başvuruya tabidir. Yani diğer bir deyişle kapanış tarihinden önce e, nihai proje önerilerini sunmanız gerekmektedir. 2023 yılı çalışma programında okyanuslar ve suların restorasyonu çağrısı altında bulunan e, 11 başlığa ek olarak e, ayrıca toprak sağlığı ve gıda ve e, iklim değişikliğine uyum misyonları ile de iki e, farklı ortak çağrı geliştirildiğini bilgisini e, sizlerle paylaşmak isterim. E, 2023 çağrımızın açılması ile birlikte 17-18 Ocak 2023 tarihlerinde Avrupa Komisyonu e, tarafından bir e, mis- misyon bilgi günleri düzenlenmiştir. E, bahse konu e, etkinliğe ilişkin kayıtlar e, web sitemizden sizlerle e, siz paydaşlarımızın bilgisine sunulmuştur. E, bu ve e, benzer tüm etkinliklerin duyurusu e, ve kayıt bilgileri web sitemiz olan www.ufukarpa.org.tr e, adresinde yer almaktadır. E, katılımcıların mümkün olan en kısa zamanda ilgili etkinliklere kayıt olmalarını e, ve web, web sitemize üye olarak da e, güncel haberleri takip etmelerini öne, önermekteyiz. E, sözlerime son verirken Etkinliğin düzenlenmesine büyük emeği olan Avrupa Birliği ve Türkiye Cumhuriyeti tarafından ortak finanse edilen ve yürütücüsünün Türkiye Cumhuriyeti Sanayi ve Teknoloji Bakanlığı, ee, ana yararlanıcısının TÜBİTAK olduğu ve rekabetçi sektörler programı kapsamında desteklenen 
Ufuk 2020'de Türkiye Faz 2 Teknik Destek Projesi ekibine huzurlarınızda saygı ve teşekkürlerimi sunmak isterim. E, bu vesileyle alanımız kapsamında açılan e, çağrı konularının tedarik edilmesinden e, ortak ortaklık süreçlerinin yönetilmesine kadar e, her hususta sizlere elimizden gelen her türlü desteği sağlamaktan memnun olacağımızı belirtir ve, ve, ve verimli bir e, seminer olmasını temenni ederim. E, ayrıca etkinliğimizde bize destek sağlayan değerli konuşmacılarımıza da teşekkürlerimi iletmek istiyorum son olarak. E, I would like to thank our project team leader Odysseus Spiroğlu and our training coordinator Nicolas Floratos e, as well as our Uh, distinguished guests, uh, Spiros Kuvelis, uh, board member of the mission, uh, Restora Oceans and Waters, uh, Christina Delgiani, uh, policy officer of the Institute for Sustainable uh, Development at EPLO, uh, and Cecilis and Irini Apazolu, uh, who are the project members of uh, Prep War Blue Project, and their participation and contribution are highly appreciated. Uh, and we look forward to an engaging and insightful discussion. Uh, now, uh, I would like to give the floor to our first speaker, Odysseus Spirold. Thank you. Thank you, Merve. Thank you for the introduction. And I would like to welcome all participants myself. We have uh, a very good roster today with um, uh, great experts that are here to share their experiences and uh, their insights with you. Uh, so without further ado, I will uh, uh, just present a very short presentation to give you an, oversight, an, an overview of uh, what we plan today and uh, share a few elements uh, on the key issues of uh, the OSAN mission. So uh, can, can you see my screen? Not yet. No, not yet, no. Not yet. Give me a moment. I, I guess I have to share the screen. Okay. How about now? Mm, not yet. Mm, ah, something is starting. Okay. Can um, we see your your uh, notes, uh, not your slide presentation? Yeah, okay. I need to swap screens. Okay. Perfect. Is the, okay. Now, so. Uh, a quick introduction uh, to our team. We are the team of uh, Turkey in Horizon Europe project, Turkey in Horizon 2020. Uh, today here we are, uh, it, it's me and uh, Nikolaos, and of course we have with us uh, Celine and Rigar, and uh, the rest of uh, our distinguished speakers are uh, senior experts in the field and they will, they will share this uh, webinar with us. Um, I want to remind to the participants that uh, we have uh, some online tools which are always useful and uh, I think Merve already mentioned the, uh, the first one which is the uh, website of uh, Turkey in Horizon 2020 and to Vuka Europa, which is the main gate of uh, information from Tubitak but we also have uh, a help desk available for you and all our recordings uh, uh, available in, in our YouTube channel. Uh, we will share with, uh, with you uh, both presentations and recordings of today. Uh, Merve already presented uh, uh, the agenda. This is it. So a few key points from, uh, from myself and then uh, we'll move to the uh, to Spiros Kuvelis. Uh, Spiros is an Ocean board member and uh, an EC senior associate. Uh, he is the director of the Institute of Sustainable Development uh, of EPLO. Uh, and he will share with us the insights on uh, how you can, uh, uh, what you should do and what, what's the expected profile of a winning project under mission. He will try to give you the insight of uh, behind the policy. Uh, after that, we will have uh, the intelligence behind the, the recent calls, the current calls of uh, the Ocean Mission by Christina De Ligiani. Christina is also a policy officer from the Institute of Sustainable Development of EPLO. And finally, we have uh, a representative from uh, Prep for Blue, Cecil Nis, uh, a support platform and tool for the mission that will help you 
build up your idea and uh, your consortium. And we will close the session with uh, Nikolaos Floratos, our training coordinator, with uh, uh, the next steps that uh, you should take if you're really interested in participating in this call. Uh, so let me give you the, the overview of uh, the EU missions. We have five missions. Uh, the uh, the OSAN and Waters mission is not the only one. We have four others. One mission is dedicated to cancer and uh, the improvement of lives for more than 3 million people. We have the climate resilient uh, mission uh, where we aim to make 150 regions and communities uh, climate resilient. Uh, we have the, uh, the climate neutral and smart cities mission where we aim at 100 cities. And of course, we have the soil missions where we look at uh, improving the health of our soils. And finally, of course, uh, the oceans and waters mission, uh, which uh, we deal with uh, the health of our oceans and waters. Uh, we'll deliver uh, on uh, the European Union's uh, measurable targets. Uh, and the aim, of course, the overall objective is uh, protect and restore uh, the ecosystem and the biodiversity of our oceans. Uh, it is, uh, as every mission is quite ambition, the calls that uh, are published uh, have uh, high expectations from the proposers and uh, look for really ambitious and innovative ideas. Um, the, the mission starfish, so uh, a nice graph that uh, summarizes what this mission is about. You can see it in your screen now. So the idea is that through the ocean mission, we try to fill the knowledge and emotional gap. We try to regenerate the marine and freshwater ecosystem. So more practical uh, ideas and solutions that can help us decarbonize our oceans, our seas and our waters. Uh, achieve zero pollution in, in future uh, future products and in future in, uh, infrastructure. And of course, revamp the governance behind all these uh, initiatives that uh, deal with, uh, with ocean and waters. As in the soil mission, we have here also the, um, the idea of lighthouses. So lighthouses are sites where we can pilot, we can demonstrate, develop and deploy the mission activities across the EU seas and uh, river basins. There are four lighthouses, uh, and these are the Mediterranean, uh, the Dunab uh, river basin with the Black Sea, uh, the Black Sea and, uh, Baltic and North Sea, and of course the Atlantic, uh, Atlantic uh, Arctic Ocean basin. Uh, through the mission lighthouses, our goal, of course, is to increase the regional engagement, to create integrated approaching and uh, uh, real world testing. Um, there are some tools available for all uh, proposals that uh, you can use. There is a portfolio of projects identified by a team of experts. Uh, you can find all of them together in a nice dashboard with a quick guide and uh, along with portfolio analysis, analysis report. This can give you some insights and some ideas from past successful projects. So you will know what has already been funded and you will know where you should uh, aim for the next, uh, for the next uh, proposals. Um, the mission objectives and targets uh, are, first of all, to protect and restore marine and freshwater ecosystem and bio, uh, ecosystems and biodiversity. And you can see that there are very specific and measurable KPIs. So uh, at least 30% and strictly protect 10% of EU's seas areas, uh, 25 kilometers, 1,000 kilometers of free flowing rivers, and marine nature restoration targets. So all of these are uh, quantifiable. As you can see, the second uh, in the second objective, to prevent and eliminate pollution of our oceans, we are looking at the reduction of at least 50% of plastic litter, of microplastics, of, uh, of uh, chemical pesticides. And finally, make the blue economy carbon neutral and circular with zero 
net zero uh, maritime emissions with zero carbon aquaculture and low carbon uh, multi-purpose use of marine space. Uh, I'm We'll dig a lot more into these objectives and you will be able to see how these calls, the, the, uh, the announced calls, uh, respond and uh, uh, address these specific objectives. Uh, I, I will um, give very few, um, I, a very short presentation on, on how you can align the proposal with uh, the EU uh, the EU goals. Uh, this is more generic, uh, so this is something that you need to keep into your mind uh, in order to make sure that you are addressing indeed the calls, the, the objectives of the calls. So make sure that you have a clear connection with the EU mission objectives, uh, make sure that your project contributes to these objectives, and you are advancing the overall goal of the healthier oceans and waters. Uh, analyze the current status, the current state, the best practice in the field, have a look at the successful project for, from the dashboard and make sure that you are not repeating something that has already been researched, but we already have a solution for that. Emphasize your novelty and impact. Uh, make sure that you are proposing a cutting edge approach, not just a small iterative improvement on something that we have. Uh, remember that missions are uh, ambitious calls. Make sure you, that you demonstrate scalability and replication. What you should uh, suggest into your solutions, into your proposal, should be easily scalable. scalable. So if we suggest something for one uh, basin, that could be replicable to another one. Uh, and of course, it should scale up. Articulate the innovative aspects and the relevance to EU mission objectives. So make sure that uh, you explain uh, in a very clear way what you plan to do in order to address the mission objectives. Provide concrete examples for that and highlight the effects and the impact that uh, these will have uh, in the future. Um, in the plenary approach, this is something that uh, can be said for every uh, EU call now. You need interdisciplinary teams, you need social scientists, for instance, you need engineers, you need physicists, you need biologists. You need to um, include all these disciplines into your proposal and make sure that you integrate them uh, in, in a, uh, in a format and, and template that they can work together. And of course, uh, ensure that you have a clear and coherent project narrative. You explain clearly what you plan to do and how you're going to, um, to uh, create something that uh, will actually um, uh, contribute to, this, uh, to, to, to the objective. Uh, stakeholder involvement, that of course goes without saying. You need to involve the stakeholders from the very beginning. You need to identify them and make sure that uh, one way or another, you are including them into your proposal, into your consortium, either as partners or as, or as associated partners or as uh, any other form of uh, uh, collaboration that you see fit and that you can, uh, can justify it. Uh, but, when you include these stakeholders, make sure that you are ensuring that they will work together. Uh, and this can be done only through transparency, through trust, through mutual understanding, and through building a culture of continuous learning. Equal representation, make sure that uh, you are supporting that in all regions and communities. And you keep a balance between the short term and the longer term goal. Uh, goes among the different stakeholders. Remember that each stakeholder has different priorities, has different perspectives, and you need uh, to combine and prioritize all this. Communication dissemination. Uh, awareness is something that uh, uh, we need to improve in any case. Uh, we cannot achieve our goals if we're not able to explain these goals to the public. And uh, 
we will not be able to explain this goal to the public if we can facilitate this knowledge sharing, the learning and the capacity building that is needed. And of course, uh, we cannot do anything of uh, any any of these by uh, by not improving the visibility, the credibility and the reputation of the project. So you need to uh, uh, ensure that you have uh, a complete and strong communication dissemination um, for, uh, strategy. Budget and resource planning. Uh, again, this is quite generic, but it applies here as well. You need to develop a realistic budget. We may look for ambitious proposals, but that doesn't mean that uh, the budget is infinite. Um, uh, and of course, make sure that uh, when you are preparing your proposal, you try to um, create the monitoring and the evaluation mechanism that is needed in order to make sure that uh, you achieve your objectives. That means uh, measurable indicators, uh, KPIs that uh, are quantifiable, and you will monitor them throughout the project. Uh, and that's it. I didn't uh, want to take more time of, uh, of the next of the speakers. Uh, I'm happy to respond to any, to any question, but uh, I think maybe it's, uh, it's better if uh, we can uh, open the Q&A session later once uh, we have at least uh, uh, the two next presentations. Um, so I'd like to pass the floor to Spiros, who will um, present to us the insight behind the uh, Oceans and Water Scope. Thank you, Odisea. Uh, it's actually been a very, very interesting presentation that you gave because I think it helps uh, the people that are interested in working within the context of the EU mission for the oceans and, and waters uh, to understand how they can become part of that. Before I start, I would like to thank you and Nikos and your whole team, as well as Merve for her warm welcome. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be with you and actually helping me do my work as a board member of the uh, EU mission for the oceans and waters, because what we at the board are trying to do is on one hand to give some guidance to the European Union and Commission on how this should be developing in the future years and how things should be uh, shaping up. But it's also very, very important for us to play a role, if you like, as ambassadors of the mission towards everyone who can be involved. And uh, today you have set up a case in which we can use the loudspeaker you provide us with to get everyone to understand what the mission is and how they can be part of. Um, so I'm now turning this into full screen mode. And um, I will talk to you about the EU mission Restore Our Ocean and Waters. As Odyssey said, this is one of the five missions that the European Union is, uh, has been working on for a number of years now. And uh, it is the program, it is part of the program that was established in 2021 with the five missions. I will not stick too much into this because Odyssey has said a few things already. Uh, but what is important is to keep in mind that this program, this mission, like the other four missions, are rooted in the Horizon Europe Research and Innovation Program. So uh, they are, this is where they come from. They go beyond research and innovation and the existing instruments cutting across policies, programs and different levels of governance. So they try to make a framework in which there can be collaboration. And they are expected to develop and demonstrate innovative technological, social, business and governance solutions to promote new forms of governance allowing everyone to play an active role. And this is where everyone who's following this, this webinar today is, uh, is actually uh, part of. Uh, again, the mission is an EU policy priority. It has been announced by the uh, Commission uh, President Ursula von der Leyen in the 11th February 2022. And this is where we have, uh, the Commission has brought together about half a billion in funding for the missions in order to make sure that um, they will be the largest research and development program, Horizon Europe and other instruments that can actually provide the responses to the big issues, the big challenges that we're facing through the five themes of the missions. In the case of uh, the mission Restore Our Water, Our Ocean and Waters by 2030, 
Um, as uh, Odyssey has explained, we are looking into the three priorities, thematic priorities that are to protect and restore marine and freshwater ecosystems and biodiversity. The second is to prevent and eliminate pollution of our oceans, seas, and waters. And that has to do a lot, not only uh, with uh, plastic pollution, which is a very, very bad, a very big uh, percentage and part of the work that we do, but it also looks into other forms of pollution that might be coming from either sea-based activities or even land-based activities that flow through streams and rivers into the oceans and the seas. And the third one is to make the blue economy carbon neutral and circular. Uh, I'm being told that my presentation is not in full screen mode, so I will try again, but I'm actually seeing it in full screen mode. Can you just give me a second? I will share again in just a second. Can you see it now in full screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, the third priority is to make the blue economy carbon neutral and circular. And for those who are not very familiar with the blue economy, it's actually the whole field of economic activity that takes place on the surface, on the water column, on the coastline, everything that is related to the seas and oceans, from fisheries and aquaculture to um, shipping to transportation. Uh, to minerals, to everything that you can imagine, produ production of food, and so on. There are also two enablers that are very important. If you can see this one, digital ocean and water's knowledge system and public mobilization and engagement. And those two enablers, let's see for a second, enabler number one, which is the digital ocean and water's knowledge system. In our jargon, in the uh, mission, we call it the DTO, the digital twin of the ocean. Uh, which we ex we expect and hope that through the development that is happening in the different technical tools that are existing for this will lead to better decision making so that it will allow us to better understand the ocean, simulate alternative scenarios, predict responses and changes, and so make best informed decisions because it is a multi-parameter um, case. And of course, to have the digital twin ocean that will allow us to use satellite data, marine data, advanced models, artificial intelligence, and so on and so forth. It's a very big process. It's a process that we are trying to streamline with what is happening in other parts of the world, including the United States, China, and many other places. Um, obviously, this is a case of uh, trying to establish the strongest partnerships, and it is a very demanding case because it's, it's an unknown territory in many ways. And the second enabler is the public mobilization. So it's, uh, as, as uh, Odysseus was saying, the involvement of stakeholders is hugely important. And this is why you need to keep it in mind when you're also trying to put together proposals. So public mobilization has to do with co-creation and co-design with citizen science, which we believe is very important, education, literacy and awareness, and stewardship and volunteering. I'm not sticking to each and every uh, line in this presentation because it would take us hours, but anyway, the presentation will be available to you, so uh, you don't need to take quick notes now. Um, then we have the four mission lighthouses. Again, uh, this was described by you. It says we have the four ge geographic um, entities in which the mission is being deployed, and we are trying to develop into these the sites to pilot, demonstrate, develop, and deploy the mission activities across the EU uh, seas and river basins. The first one is the Baltic North Sea Lighthouse, where the key objective is to make the blue economy carbon neutral and circular, as you can see up here. But when you see a lighthouse that is connected to an objective, this does not mean that in this region, the other objectives are not present or equally important. It's just that uh, we select one to make it like the, the biggest trust, I would say, of the work that we're trying to do. So in the Baltic North Sea, the blue economy is very important. Uh, however, pollution control, blue economy, um, involvement, and so on are very important. Um, 
In the Danube Lighthouse and the Atlantic Arctic Lighthouse, the objective is to protect and restore marine and freshwater ecosystems and biodiversity. Uh, let me here open just a small parenthesis to say that, uh, as it was mentioned, and I want to underline, we are not looking only into the uh, marine water environment, but the freshwater environment in the sense of important rivers and, and uh, water systems that are leading to the sea are equally important. And this is why the Danube in itself is one of, of the uh, areas of focus and of importance for, um, for the um, ocean mission. Uh, obviously, for those of you that are coming from Turkey, this is also a very important fact because the, the Black Sea uh, work needs to be connected also to what is happening with the Danube and all the pollution or other things that are coming through uh, this very important river. And of course, then we have the Mediterranean Lighthouse, of which I have the honor to be the uh, focus group coordinator. And here the objective is to prevent and eliminate pollution of our oceans, seas, and waters. L plastic litter plays a very important role. Uh, microplastic also, but then we also want to look into the cases of nutrient losses, the use and risk of chemical pesticides, and everything that flows into the Mediterranean from um, agricultural and other uses around the, uh, the basin. Um, the idea behind the mission is that we want to build as many synergies as we can. So to team up beyond the European Commission and the Horizon Europe level, is to look into other opportunities. So Horizon Europe, the European Maritime Fisheries and Aquaculture Fund, Life Program, Interreg, InvestEU, and I will come about to this in a minute because there are synergies about with the other programs, but also work with member states and regions with international partners, like for example, in the Mediterranean, you would have the Union for the Mediterranean, the UNDK Ocean Sciences, with public and private sector, and I want to underline the private sector here, we want to see the private sector taking the results of good science and good research and make it, turn it into practical solutions. And of course, with citizens and youth. Uh, there is a series of very interesting uh, publications around the mission, which I would very much encourage you to go into the website of the European Commission Ocean Mission and find uh, lots of things. One more thing that we need to take into account about the mission is the mission charter. The mission charter is uh, one uh, document or one platform, if you like, that was created so that it can allow as many stakeholders as possible to become part of the mission community. The charter is meant to mobilize all stakeholders to achieve the goals of the mission, to strengthen cooperation and align efforts between them, and thereby create a critical mass for the transformational change that is needed to restore our oceans by 2030. The charter is actually a way that for those that will adhere to the charter can send a, a very clear signal of how they uh, consider important the protection of oceans and waters to be involved with the process, but also to multiply opportunities for networking, exchanges of experiences, improving knowledge, create communities and create impact around those, and of course, benefit from mission services. So this is a point that I want to underline, and I want to invite all of you to look into the opportunity to adhere to the charter in some way, because that actually allows you to be receiving more information about what is happening, the evolution of the mission and the, the things that are happening. Um, the uh, adhering to the charter is very simple. If you go to restore our oceans and waters in the European Union um, website, you can find actually the charter document, and then you press the button and endorse the charter. This is where you will have to provide a bit of information, explain what is your interest, the things that you do, and um, how you would like to be involved in the process. Obviously, being a European Commission process, it's totally free of charge, so no one has to pay anything to, to become part of the Charter. And it does not come with a strong engagement in terms of time or something, but for everyone who is interested in the process of the mission, they can become part of the, of the effort. And this is why I always, always encourage everyone to become part of that. And you can see that through the um, charter, we can map the mission atlas, as we call it. So we find out who is doing what around the whole, mid the whole European Union. So we have in the charter partners that are working on research and innovation, on ev evidence-based knowledge and data, upscaling, deployment, and replication of solutions, citizen engagement, outreach, and awareness raising, education and training, 
And of course, actions that came, uh, what we call the past actions that came way before we started this process. Um, this list of di different processes and things that are happening within the mission, um, uh, we, we put them there because they can also give you an indication of what are the broader scopes of ideas that could be involved in a project. Um, I'm not sticking anymore to the mission charter because I think that uh, you now have the, the gist of what it is about just uh, to give you this final view that it can support to establish the own transition agendas to achieve the mission objectives, provide visibility, networking, as I said before, organize events, and have access to advisory services, and this is very important. Now, what has been implemented so far? Uh, let's see some uh, actions in 21-22 in regards of the mission. So one thing is the Horizon Europe work programs, calls, and projects a total uh, of uh, around 350 million for research and innovation projects in 2021, 2023. And look at this breakdown here, we had the call of 2021 with 117 million euro funding um, or a total of 124.4 total project cost with the, um, with the uh, matching funding that came through for calls of proposals. The call for 2022 was up to 117 million and the call that is open now for 2023, it opened on the 17th of January, and the deadline is the 20th of September 2023, uh, which has, uh, if I remember right, an even bigger budget than those. Uh, let's see, for example, what is happening with emission calls and projects in 2021-22. So you had in the protect and restore, if you remember the three priorities, the blue parks, which is uh, integrated activities, marine protected um, management. Then you had the Danube Lighthouse, which is the uh, community support action and innovation actions, restoration of river connectivity and wetlands. In the Atlantic and Arctic Lighthouse, you had community support activities and innovation actions, including coastal reforestation, climate resilience adaptation, coastal areas, and so on. In the Mediterranean Lighthouse, we had uh, under the theme of preventing and eliminating pollution, community support actions and innovation actions for the prevention, reduction, and elimination of plastic litter, plastic and litter prevention, sorry, reduction and elimination of chemical pollution, and cross-basing topics for plastic-free European rivers and low environmental impact fishing gear. And finally, in objective three, making the blue economy carbon neutral and circular, we had community support actions and uh, coordination support actions, sorry, and innovation actions in the themes of sustainable aquaculture and multi-use of marine space and bringing algae-based products on the market. Now, I take a break here because I saw in the Q&A that somebody, I don't recall the name, was asking about solutions related, for example, to wave energy. Obviously, if we're trying to find ways to make the blue economy carbon neutral and circular, finding ways that can enrich the discussion of uh, renewable energy coming from the ocean is definitely one of the priorities. And uh, provided it covers the issues that, um, that Odyssey has mentioned before on how a project can be structured, then definitely it would be very interesting. Uh, also delivering on Enabler 1, which is the uh, ocean, the digital twin of the ocean um, and waters knowledge system. In 2021, we had underlying models for the European digital twin innovation actions for 7 million, and public infrastructure for the European Digital Twin Ocean for 3 million euros, and in 2022, integration of biodiversity monitoring data into the Digital Twin of the Ocean for 10 million, and European DNA Library of Marine and Freshwater Species for 2 million. So you see, it is a very broad program, and there's quite a lot of things that are happening. The second part is the enabler number two, which is the mobilization and engagement of citizens. And again, here you can see a lot of examples like in 2021, relation of young generations with the sea and water, values, expectations, and engagement. This is uh, a research innovation action for 1 million, and then one more million for community support actions uh, in piloting citizen science in marine and freshwater domains, and Europeanization of plastic pi pirate science, citizen science initiative, difficult to pronounce, sorry. In 2022, uh, we had similar projects. You can see the titles here, so I don't take too much time. For 3 million in com community support actions and another 3 million for a second community support action. 
Uh, first one was on education on blue sustainability and protection of marine and freshwater ecosystems. And the second towards local community driven business models, regenerative ocean farming. Now, in terms of the lighthouses, there have been a number of events for the kickoff in uh, the Mediterranean. We had the kickoff in uh, Marseille in France in June 2022, in the Atlantic Arctic in Cork in Ireland in November 22, in the Danube Research Innovation Days in September 22, and in April there was the launch of the actual lighthouse, and Baltic and North Sea also took place in, uh, I don't remember which city, in April 2023. And of course, there's a lot of uh, events that are taking place organized by the mission. Uh, we participate as mission board members, and we also try to involve in all of them as many actors as possible. So from all walks, let's say, of life, of society, and of economy, we try to involve all the stakeholders. Take, for example, the ports, the cities, the fleets, islands, which we consider a very high priority, and eventually we believe that there will be one additional um, priority field, if you like, for the uh, for the mission. And of course, the regions, because as you know, the European Union is promoting as much as possible inter-regional cooperation. Uh, there is a lot of political support for the work that is taking place under the mission. So uh, we have the different pieces of legislation. I will not tire you with this. And uh, of course, there is a lot of further support and other programs that are coming from the mission implementation platform, from studies that are either commissioned by the European Union, the European Commission, or by other parties and are contributed to the mission work and synergies with other EU programs, including the European Maritime Fisheries and Aquaculture Fund, the Recovery and Resilience Fund, which for a number of countries, including Belgium, Cyprus, Greece, Finance, Italy, Poland, Portugal, and Spain, are funds that are actually woven together. So we, we find synergies where funds coming from one fund can actually support the work of the other. Um, and of course, synergies with other EU funds like the DTO, the Digital Twin of the Ocean, is supported by Copernicus, Marine and EMODNET, the European Marine Research Infrastructures that implement work that has to do with the digitalization. Um, and I'm not going very much, but also there are two further programs that I like to underline. Blue Invest, which is the initiative of the European Commission of Digimare for innovation project led by small and medium enterprises, which is something that I would like you to keep in mind because we want to see work from SMEs, from innovation SMEs and so on, that are providing solutions. And then discussions with the LIFE program have started on how LIFE projects can be linked to the mission as well, obviously through their connection for environmental activities. Uh, here I have a very uh, interesting uh, graph that shows that for objective one, to protect and restore marine and freshwater ecosystem and biodiversity, we had in total 292 projects. In objective, uh, where is that? Objective two, to prevent and eliminate pollution, we had the biggest chunk, which is 672 projects. And in objective three, to make the sustainable blue economy carbon neutral and circular, we had 277 projects. Um, then we have the cross-cutting enabler in the digital uh, twin of the ocean, 324 projects. And here we have in the cross-cut enabler public mobilization, 66. Um, so you see it is quite distributed, but we see that we have a preference from stakeholders for the uh, pollution and uh, elimination of plastics as well, and then for the rest. Now, I will go also through some tips for successful Horizon mission ocean calls. Uh, I'm sorry that I will repeat quite a lot of what uh, Odyssey has already said, but I think it might make sense to have that after I presented to you what the, the mission does. Also, let me clarify that we as board members do not have any say or any um, involvement in screening proposals. So um, I can give you advice, but I cannot help you going through with any of your proposals. Uh, they have to be strong proposals in themselves. So the first thing that I want to stay, stick on is high, highlighting your novelty and impact. It is very, very important for, for the commission to see novelty so that we have innovation, to, so that we have innovation that comes out of uh, serious work and, and research and development that now can go into the application uh, level. So we need to see uh, proposals that are cutting edge approaches to demonstrate innovation elements of your proposal. 
we need to see the scalability and replication of what you are proposing, the relevance to other EU mission objectives. So this kind of interdisciplinarity is always welcome. So if you, for example, you have a proposal that tackles, um, I don't know, marine pollution, but at the same time is important for, for climate change, this will definitely be an added value for your proposal to provide concrete examples, best practices and case studies, and to focus on potential multiplier effects. So how a proposal, for example, would foster innovation, knowledge sharing and transfer and so on. The second, which I mentioned already, is the interdisciplinarity. Horrible work to, to, to pronounce, but it means quite a lot. Uh, and we want to see this through team members, including team members from humanities and social sciences, for example, to see the integration of knowledge from various fields to create a holistic, integrated, and well thought out project proposal. So avoid the monoculture in a proposal because this is your field of activity. Try to work with other disciplines, with other scientists, with other groups that are doing different things. A clear and coherent project narrative that incorporates and synthesizes a diversity of perspectives, views, and insights. Uh, very importantly, very, very importantly, map and engage your stakeholders. And this is not a project that you will be proposing that wants to work by itself in a laboratory, in a university, in a company or an NGO. We need to see that you have tried to do as much as you can to involve public authorities and policy makers, for example, the private sector that I mentioned before, we want to see businesses taking up good ideas, investing in them, turning them into the, the industry, into the economy. Uh, research entities and academia, of course, which is very much where a lot of the research and good technologies come, and the civil society, because we need to be able to reach out to as many people as possible. It is important to ensure diversity, equity, and inclusion in representation in your teams. Would much more prefer a team that is equality uh, that has equality between genders, for example, than have only a man uh, a group made out of of uh, male uh, members. And review your stakeholder mapping at intervals. Uh, this is very important, actually, because when you're putting together a proposal, you will see that even after a few months. There will be new stakeholders that you want to involve. And here, do remember what I told you about the, the uh, mission charter, because when you want to look through your stakeholders, looking back into the charter, provided that you're also a member of that, will allow you to get in touch with more and more stakeholders. Communication and dissemination is also very important. We want to see effective communication strategies to raise awareness, understanding among key stakeholders and the general public not only for your project, but for the mission and mission charter. So the proposal that you will be putting together needs to be referenced and show how it promotes a mission charter. Facilitate knowledge sharing, learning, capacity building in the blue economy across geographies. And finally, enhance the visibility, credibility, and reputation of the project. In terms of budget, I will not stick very much to this because uh, Odysseus has explained it very well. Uh, the missions are ambitious with many objectives and targets. Budgeting and resource allocation must be realistic, but it also has to be uh, very, very forward looking. So we do not want small little bits, we want projects that will be making a big difference. And also it is important to look into the potential risks, disruptions and uncertainties that need to be considered and a plan to overcome the problems when they arise. So, you know, as much foresight as possible when you're putting together your proposal is important. Um, I will go very quickly on what you can do through promote through your own work to promote the objectives, because, as I said, we want to see in the proposal that uh, you will be putting together that it will be promoting the mission in itself. So we want to see leading actions for the creation of lighthouse communities so you can contribute to the upscaling and to the creation of lighthouse communities um, and create mission actors. We want to see communities, for example, a group of ports, islands, regions, cities, fleets, industries, and so on, that will be putting together things that promote the work that we're actually doing. And when I'm saying doing, please keep in mind that the mission is uh, quite certainly expected to continue also after the, um, the deadline of 2025, uh, that uh, this is the current cycle of the program because it is considered a very uh, efficient way of pushing forward the agenda of the European Commission. Examples of actions by ports, for example, are energy transition, circularity and pollution reduction, ecological transition, carbon neutrality, 
uh, decarbonization and so on. And this, of course, could be uh, for every other type of stakeholder. I'm going actually quite fast through this because I, yeah, and, and that's that. I mean, I will stop here because I do not want to take more time, but the idea is that first it is important that you get in your minds what the mission is about and you do have to remember the three priorities that we have set that we work in the four different geographical regions or lighthouses if you like uh, but we do welcome very much synergies between regions uh, that we want partners to become uh, to adhere to the mission through the charter and also to propose things that they can do. And this is where you come in the picture because you can be the generators of good, significant proposals. Do remember that when you put in a proposal, you're actually going for uh, the one or two uh, actions that will be submit supported by the uh, European Commission per priority. So there will not be like 100 proposals out of which 50 will be getting funding. You have to go to become one of the one or two or three cases. And this means that when you design your partnerships and involvement of your stakeholders, you have to make sure that you're building something that is really very solid. And with this, uh, I will stop here. I will stop sharing as well. And of course, I will be here for any questions or points that you want to bring up, uh, but this at the end of the event, I think, unless you want to do it now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Spiros. That was really extremely, extremely useful. I believe there are a couple of participants that they have raised their hand and we have uh, a couple of questions in the Q&A session. Um, so... Would you like me to read out the question and then say what I know for the... In terms yes, of the answer? it's possible. I will be okay, great. So the first question is, could we apply to the 2021 calls? They are still open. Obviously not. The 2021 are not open, but the 2023 is open. Uh, so these, these calls are open until, uh, if I remember well, September 2023. So this is a time uh, that uh, you have to look into these proposals and you have to get your act together because it takes time to put uh, significant proposals together. So there's not much time left. Uh, second one I say, is it possible to provide more information about the digital twin of the ocean? Is the product finalized or is there some opportunity to collaborate on it? Okay, this is a fantastic question because uh, it is by far not finalized. It is a, an ongoing process. A lot of work is being built through the existing uh, systems of the European Commission, like the EMODnet that I said before, like the European Space Agency and so on. Everyone is trying to provide either data or methodologies or algorithms or everything. And if you want to do this, I would suggest that your best way to do it is to, first of all, get in contact with the mission by becoming a signatory of the charter. And when you put your proposal through for the mission charter, do mention very clearly that A, you're very interested in the DTO, and B, if you have specific things that you want to propose because you're developing this kind of knowledge, do mention it. Uh, the Secretariat of the mission is, uh, is a group of very strong, very professional people, and they will look into that, and I'm certain that they will get in touch with you because I know that in the mission as a whole, we're very interested, but even more the chair of the mission, the, the president of the mission board, Pascal Lamy, is uh, chairing himself the digital twin of the ocean meetings, and he will be definitely very keen to find anyone who can provide support. Um, and I think these are the questions that we have so far. Yes. Um, okay. Regarding the links, that was another question. Of course, you will receive the presentation with all the links that are mentioned there, so you don't have to worry on that. Um, there were a couple of uh, hands that were uh, uh, raised. I don't know whether they wish to ask something uh, via audio. That facilitates, of course, the interaction of uh, our uh, workshop. And uh, we have some time yet, so I don't know whether the two people that wanted to raise a question, they would like to uh, ask that uh, live via audio. Please let us know. So we have here uh, Afsin Yusuf and Mr. Professor uh, Tahir. Just some question directly use the Q&A button. It will be much more easier. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. while we're waiting, I have one question because that we have a little bit of time, so that allows us to to take that time. Um, Spiro, you mentioned that uh, we need to collaborate, we need to have synergies with other EU funding programs. You mentioned some of them uh, in your slides, and there were something like more than 1,400 projects that are related to the ocean mission objectives. Um, so my question is, what kind of tip or advice will you give while participants are identifying with which projects to collaborate with? from that exhaustive list of 1,400, what, what could be the selection criteria or the sets criteria, if I may say? Thank you for your question, Nico. I, I, I don't think that there is like one solution that fits everything. The um, main point I was trying to make in the synergy with other funding programs of the European Commission is that what we try to do through the mission is that we take the Horizon program, for example, and find how this can be uh, complemented by activities that are happening throughout the program. So take, for example, I'll just give you a theoretical example. Take, for example, that there might be a project uh, between Turkey and a neighboring country, Greece or Bulgaria or whoever, uh, in the context of the Interreg program. And you have something that is happening in this context of the Interreg program, and then you want to propose something uh, in the context of the horizon call for the uh, mission. Finding synergies that, you know, the national, say, original uh, authorities are already implementing activities through Interreg and can be complemented by what you will be proposing in, uh, in Horizon is not only not a bad thing, but it's a very welcome thing because then we have uh, multiplier effects happening. So this is the kind of thing what you cannot do, and this is known uh, to those that work with European programs, is that you cannot co-finance one program with another one. Obviously, each program has to have its own financial integrity and, and, uh, and completeness. But in terms of priorities, of synergies, of bringing in other um, stakeholders, actors, and so on, who are already involved in a program within the same context of what you will be doing, in the same geographical region, if you like, and so on, who are already active through another program, uh, as I said, Interreg or a life program or whatever, would be a good thing because this actually gives a lot of additional value or value added to uh, how the uh, funds of the Horizon program itself will be spent. So as an advice and something that would be really welcome is that uh, any participant or, or uh, any region that participates in a mission proposal, it is more than welcome to examine the current initiatives that they have been involved uh, and suggest how this will contribute as a starting point uh, in any mission proposal that they are suggesting. Yeah, that's an excellent way to put it, Nico. Uh, one thing is to, to, to get them involved as early as possible. The second is do go out there and find out what they're doing. So in know, knowing and having a kind of mapping of the stakeholders around the region or the themes that you're interested to work in is very important because that will give you this kind of insight. And obviously, I mean, like with everyone that you would put a proposal to, if you show that you have done your homework, if you allow me the work that you know, you know, your staff, the people that are around this uh, this this uh, universe of actors uh, around the theme that you want to work on is very important because then you will be avoiding duplication and you will be creating as, mo as much as possible value added. Perfect. And do you suggest to go to the mission implementation platform or to the CORDIS for doing that and identifying projects? I wouldn't have a preparation. I mean, uh, just by, by my own bias, I think that the mission implementation platform will be useful because there's a lot of direct uh, information, but CORDIS might also be providing quite a lot of information. So so both so both the one or the other. Yes. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Celine, we have one more question, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Um, can you integrate our proposal to an already ongoing EU r and project on diversity and habitat mapping, or should we submit an independent proposal? This uh, is the, the answer is definitely the, the latter, definitely the latter. So uh, you cannot integrate a proposal to something that is already ongoing because you would have to change the narrative, the budget, the everything. But to create a proposal that is independent, but shows the synergies with the existing proposal, the existing uh, activity, 
uh, as long as we're speaking about a proposal that has already been submitted, because otherwise, I mean, if it's still a proposal, you might be able to, to get it all together. But here I'm reading this phrase as integrate our proposal to an ongoing project, right? And in an ongoing project, it's better to define the synergies rather than put in one proposal for the two. Okay, thank you so much. I think we have a break now, but if you want, we can skip the break and continue with Christiana, Christina's uh, presentation. Uh, what do you suggest? Thank you all very much for my part. I'll be fo following in case there are any questions. Yeah. Um, thank you, Spiros, on that. Um, can I ask uh, then, uh, Christina, for how long is your presentation so we can plan accordingly whether we're going to have a quick break now? It's only 30 minutes, so we can, we can you know, skip the break for, for now. And uh, because my presentation um, falls back into what all this is and Spiros presented, so it will be like coherent instead of having a break. Okay, perfect. Just one more note, and that is to see Celine regarding uh, um, uh, Cecile that she's going to present prep for Blue. She's online. I know that. So she doesn't have any problem if she has to start uh, earlier, if that is the case. So Cecile, that is okay for you also to start a little bit earlier than the plan time? I can start earlier. It's just that my colleague Erini may not join then. She, she was uh, supposed to join during my presentation because she couldn't join earlier. I will try to warn her that yes. I can present earlier. Let us know if possible so we can arrange accordingly the agenda. That will be really appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, so we can we can exploit now the momentum that has been created <laughs> by Odysseus and uh, Spiros. And uh, uh, welcome, uh, Christina, in her uh, presentation. Thank you. Regarding the intelligence of the open Thank code. you. I'm gonna share my my screen now. Can you can you see it? Yes, the pre, the pre, okay. Not the presentation view, but the, is it now the presentation? Now, now it's okay. perfect. So uh, building on what Odysseus and what uh, Spiros have said, uh, there are a lot of. Um, blue economy communities, I would say, and initiatives uh, through the European Union and through other organizations uh, at a global stage that you could be part of. So the mission charter, the EU mission charter is one way to go. There's also the Blue Economy Forum and the Blue Economy Observatory that have been established by the European Union. And there are so many fora, so many webinars, so many blue economy communities, the blue invest community that you can actually participate participating and attend so that you're, uh, first of all, you come into contact with other actors, other stakeholders, but also you uh, learn what the themes are and what is what is trendy, what will be upcoming as a trend or as, as a theme, as a research topic. Um, there's also uh, the uh, UN uh, Ocean Decade uh, actions uh, that are uh, very important. This is through the UN, through UNESCO, actually, uh, IOC. So this is also something to uh, to follow because uh, UNESCO collaborates a lot with the European Union and with Digimare. So uh, with no further ado, let's talk about the um, actual um, the actual calls and there are many calls so where to start it could be overwhelming but there are two sources of um of information and intelligence the first one is the horizon work program to uh, 2023 2024 if you don't have it please download it it includes information on all missions uh, but it's also important to understand the context it gives the context it gives the background the the priorities the enablers the objectives of each mission so do download that and of course there's also the eu funding and tender portal for the mission ocean and waters where you actually have the calls that are relevant to to the mission and there's some other joint calls as well with other missions so these are the two resources where to start uh, some things to note for the uh, mission ocean and waters uh, calls the deadline is september 20th uh, 2023. 
As Peterson and Odysseus have, have stressed, uh, interdisciplinarity of themes of teams is very important. So you will need marine biologists, you will need chemists, physicists, engineers, people from the humanities and social sciences. This is uh, becoming even more important now. So there's a lot of, uh, of uh, connecting different disciplines of uh, having diverse teams uh, in the in the sense of fields, scalability and replication of projects. This is also important. So if you have a project, for instance, in the Black Sea, how could this be replicated in the Mediterranean Sea? How can you increase the, the number of end users? End users are very, very important. Um, numbers, uh, KPIs. So this is, uh, this is something that you should uh, pay um, attention to. As Peter said, uh, stakeholders, map your stakeholders, engage with them, but also include young people. Uh, 2023 is the, the year of youth uh, skills in, uh, in the European Union. So uh, youth communities, especially for the ocean and the seas, uh, is really important. There's also the EU for ocean community. There are also many um, uh, communities and initiatives for, um, for schools, the Blue School in initiative, for instance, um, get acquainted, familiarize yourself with all these initiatives and communities. Um, again, this is uh, the mission is very ambitious. Uh, the the objectives and the enablers, everything is big. Everything is very ambitious, but the budgets, as you will see, have to be very realistic and very to the ground. Uh, a great narrative around your proposal. This is important. Pay pay attention to the scope of the proposal of the call. The scope will actually lead you, will give you the, you know, the stepping stones to actually build your narrative. Um, pay great attention to that because if you don't, it means that you don't understand what is at stake, what the, the commission wants you to do. Um, we've had in the past, um, proposals that didn't follow the scope at all, didn't follow the objectives. So the narrative that they had built was totally off. So um, this is very important. Uh, gender considerations. Uh, this has to do with the diversity of your teams, um, but also um, it's not just the uh, number of female researchers. Uh, what we've seen in the Horizon programs, uh, does your institution, your company, your startup, your uh, academic uh, research center, do they have a, a gender policy in place? Policies are also important to have, apart from the number of female researchers, apart from the gender considerations when it comes to your stakeholders. This is very important. Um, in uh, last year, I think uh, there was also um, an e EMFF um, call for women in the blue economy, especially in fishers community. So uh, gender is becoming more and more important in the blue economy even in uh, more traditional male dominated fields. So um, some definitions before we dive into the, um, into the actual calls. Um, there are three types of calls, three types of calls for this, uh, for the mission ocean. Uh, 2023 calls. There is the uh, CSA, the coordination and support actions. So these are measures such as uh, uh, making um, standards, uh, disseminating, awareness raising, communication, networking, coordination or support services, policy dialogues. There's so many so many policy initiatives and so many policies that you have to include into uh, into the blue economy and the mission notion um, mutual learning exercises and studies including design studies for new infrastructure because we talk about you know offshore for instance offshore uh, energy needs a lot of new infrastructure ports as well so you might also have to include um complementary activities of strategic planning of net the working coordination between programs in different countries. Um, the research and innovation actions are actions that are uh, focusing on establishing and creating new knowledge or to explore a new or improved 
a technology, it could be a process, it could be um, a service, a solution, a product. The, uh, this kind of project is expected to have an outcome of a TRL 2 to 6, which means that this is actually um, a functional um, uh, prototype. And the innovation actions are uh, more advanced uh, um, when you compare it to the research and innovation actions. So the product and the stage um, has to be more advanced. It has to be closer to the market. It has to be a demonstration, a pilot of a project. It has to be an upscaling of a technology, of a product, of a process, a service, or a solution. So. Uh, I will be we will be sharing this presentation, so there's no need to actually, you know, uh, take uh, studios uh, notes of this. So uh, I have created a list of all the of the open calls. So we have eleven um, open calls at this uh, at this point, um, and also we have two open joint calls. So instead of actually, you know, going through one by one, what I've done is I kind of um, uh, clustered them according to the themes because uh, Spiros has talked about the lighthouses, has talked about, you know, enablers such as citizen mobilization and engagement. So um, the cross base in themes. So they're, they're, I just clustered them so that you understand how the what the you know the mentality and the strategy behind those goals is so let me just so the very first uh, ones the two ones that i have included have to do with marine and lake habitats so the ocean mission or rather the mission ocean and waters does not only focus on the marine environment, but also on rivers and lakes and other um, water habitats. The very first call um, is the European, excuse me, the European Blue Parks, the European Blue Parks Fund. So this focuses on the protection and restoration of marine habitats. It's an innovation action and it relates and supports many um, initiatives and many policies of the European Union, including the European Green Deal. Of course, you know, the European Green Deal cannot exist without the blue economy. So we call it the, um, the, the Green Blue Deal because blue and green go hand in hand. The biodiversity strategy, which is very important as biodiversity loss um, contributes to climate change, has many negative uh, effects. The nature restoration law and uh, also the mission objective one. If you remember, Spiros talked about the three priorities or objectives. So mission objective one is protect and restore marine and freshwater ecosystems and biodiversity. Uh, you also have to allocate resources and engage with other actions that have been funded by Horizon Europe, uh, in particular projects funded in cluster six topics. And there's also a lot of build up on existing um, knowledge systems on current or previous EU frame co framework contracts, including Horizon 2020, um, including LIFE, including EMFF, and national and regional programs, including Interreg, including EU programs such as Corpenicus, EMODnet, which is very important, especially for the digital twin of the ocean, and the Sustainable Blue Economy Partnership and the Biodiversa partnership. The budget is a lot of money, but it's eight, approximately 8.8 .8 million euros, but the grant will also will be given to only one, uh, one project. So, uh, which means that um, this is a very ambitious project, but you will need a team of partners, uh, many partners, many geographies, many countries. Uh, of course, the size depends on you know what you have in mind uh, in terms of the project. But uh, I should say that you should, uh, for this kind of projects, you should have at least uh, six, at least six, um, uh, six team members prestigious one and very well experienced. Um, the Horizon Mission uh, um, um, 4 uh, call uh, focuses on the European natural lakes. 
So uh, this is a demonstration of uh, integrated approaches for the protection and restoration of natural lake ecosystems and their biodiversity. Again, this is an innovation action. Again, this uh, relates to and supports the implementation of the European Green Deal, the EU Biodiversity Strategy, the EU Zero Pollution Action Plan, the EU Bioeconomy Strategy, the Water Framework Directive, other instruments, other policies. Uh, what it does, it aims at um, having demonstration activities in at least three different countries um, uh, with an engagement, excuse me, of three, uh, at least three associated regions. Um, and uh, it's important to know that the budget is 12 million and the grant, the number of grants that will be uh, funded, that will be supported are three. Uh, again, um, get familiarized with the initiatives, with the policies, the European Green Deal, the biodiversity strategy, all these uh, initiatives and policies are very much important to Horizon um, and the missions at large. And you will see this, uh, especially the, or for instance, the biodiversity strategy, the nature restoration law. These are also related to other missions, uh, the soil one, the, the net cities one, the net zero cities, the climate ad adaptation. So if you're also planning to apply for other Horizon calls in other missions, get familiar with this uh, direct with the strategies, with the initiatives. So let's move to the lighthouses. So uh, the lighthouses, as uh, Spiro said, are very important. Um, uh, so uh, we do have uh, three calls specifically for um, each lighthouse. Get familiar with the lighthouses, get familiar with the, the stakeholders, uh, the research um, centers, uh, the, the themes, uh, the, the challenges that um, these lighthouses have, these regions actually have. So the first one uh, in my list is the Danube River Basin Lighthouse. And this has to do with uh, an effective and uh, sustainable management of the Danube River and the Black Sea system with demonstrations. Again, this is an innovation action. It relates to the European Green Deal, the Water Framework Directive, and the updated river basin management plan. Uh, it uh, aims at creating um, and developing um, demonstration activities in three different member states and or associated countries countries of the Danube River Basin. There's a lot of impact monitoring of the activities um, that have to do with sediment flow uh, within the Danube uh, River Basin into the Black Sea. Um, uh, the, uh, the proposal of the consortium will have to work with and engage with at least five associated regions to showcase the feasibility, replicability, and scalability of the solutions. The indicative number of grants will be two, and the budget is 17 million euros. This is, um, as, as you will see in the lighthouses, the budget is a little bit um, bigger uh, compared to um, the, the previous goals. And um, scalability, replicability are very important. The next one has to do with the Atlantic and Arctic uh, Sea Basin Lighthouse, and it has to do with uh, climate change and human activities, threats to marine biodiversity. Again, this is an innovation action. Again, it supports the implementation of the biodiversity strategy of the EU Arctic policy. This is, uh, this is the Arctic is becoming a very important policy-wise in the European Union and beyond. Um, there's a lot of um, strategies and uh, policies that I will not go into, uh, but um, everything has to do, everything is connected to uh, benefiting and to uh, supporting the communities of stakeholders around the Atlantic and the Arctic uh, Action Plan. Uh, it aims at creating ecosystem-based conservation measures and approaches to reduce the pressure from human activities and to address the marine biodiversity loss. The budget is 16 million euros and there will be two grants given to this. 
the next one is the lighthouse in the Baltic and the North Sea basins. Um, and it has to do with uh, green and energy efficient small scale fishing fleets. So it has to do with um, small scale fishing, which is very important in all regions, I would say, but especially in the Baltic and North Sea. It relates to uh, the EU Green Deal. It uh, relates to mission objective three, which is a sustainable carbon neutral and circular blue economy. Again, uh, the, the cooperation uh, between the fishing community, researchers, other stakeholders, environmental organizations, NGOs, authorities at the national and international level is very important uh, for solutions and technologies um, that uh, have to do uh, with uh, the um, um, small uh, small scale fishing. Uh, the budget is 12 million. There will be three grants given to this. Uh, you, as you see here, cooperation with the communities, the fishing communities, other communities, uh, all stakeholders is very important. And um, I mean, you see the, what we talked about, the interdisciplinarity into the stakeholders. Uh, you actually see that in the scope of work for the, for the open calls. Um, the next one is the cross basin topics, uh, topics that are um, that have to do with uh, one um, uh, more than one um, basin. So the first one has to do with um, uh, innova innovative uh, nature inclusive concepts to reconcile offshore renewable energy with ocean protection. This is a research and innovation action. Uh, it relates to a lot of um, uh, strategies, including the EU uh, Sustainable Blue Economy Strategy, the Biodiversity, EU Green Deal, but also the Paris Agreement targets, which is an international convention, the mission lighthouses, because it has to maximize synergies across basins, um, the EU partnerships for um, the clean energy transition. Um, it's, it's also very much related to the uh, Institute for um, Innovation and Technology, EIT, and the knowledge innovation communities that it has. So this is a multidisciplinary approach to, um, to, this, um, to this theme. And um, it has to do with uh, developing, with design, designing nature-inclusive offshore renewable energy devices. Um, the budget is uh, 4.5 million euros. The number of grants will be two. The other one, the other uh, call within this theme is the analysis and obstacles, uh, analysis of obstacles and the opportunities, the challenges that you have when you repurpose aged and used offshore infrastructures. Um, we, uh, we talk a lot about, you know, uh, inshore, onshore um, wind infrastructures and how this is, uh, it's difficult to recycle. Now we talk about offshore infrastructures and what to do with them. Um, uh, with the um, with the infrastructures and um, and the, the equipment, this relates to mission objective three, which is um, a carbon neutral circular blue economy, uh, and uh, the uh, the budget is one point two million million euros with uh, just one indicative number of uh, of grants. The activities are expected. The activities the um, the the analysis and the the solutions um, are expected to achieve a TRL uh, four to five. And let's go to the digital twin of the ocean. We had a lot of uh, questions before. So uh, if you're interested in the digital twin of the ocean or the DTO, as we say it, there are two calls for this. Uh, one is a research and innovation action. The other one is a coordination and support action. Uh, the first has to do with uh, socio-ecological models and how this could be integrated in the, the digital twin of the ocean. Um, it supports the implementation of the blue parks, the mission lighthouses, efficient, efficient ocean stewardship. Um, there's, there, there's also a lot of discussion and a lot of uh, international fora that will be taking 
place uh, in, the, in the next years uh, in the Mediterranean and in Europe, the, the Arocean Conference in 2024 in Greece, and, the, uh, and another one, another big conference um, um, in 2025 in, uh, in France. So uh, efficient and sustainable ocean stewardship is very important. Uh, the projects uh, should collaborate with other projects that have been funded under the Infra Horizon uh, call, so as to um, integrate and to adopt best practices with fair and open data sharing from other existing uh, programs, such as the EMODnet, Eurostat, Copernicus. And the aim is to make ocean knowledge readily available to citizens, entrepreneurs, scientists, and policymakers. The budget is 2 million euros. Um, just one grant will be given. And again, this is this has to do with um, open opening the access to to data as regards the ocean. The second uh, call under the digital twin of the ocean has to do with a roadmap towards the, integrating the inland waters into the uh, DTO. It is a coordination and support uh, action, and it relates to all objectives of the mission and the lighthouses. Um, this is developing digital infrastructure and data services to facilitate data analytics, advanced modeling, and high-performance computing development of what-if scenarios for policy developments, um, uh, so as to actually create and build resilience to climate change and sustainable development. So um, it, uh, it also aims at developing inland and waters part, which is rivers, lakes, reservoirs, wetlands, snow and ice of the mission knowledge system and uh, address activities um, for the digital twin of the ocean and a unified DTO and waters. Um, hydrosphere is a, is a word that uh, is actually used a lot into the mission ocean and waters, and this is something that you should be including in your proposals. The budget is two million. Uh, the grants is just one. So there's still there's still time to be involved in the DTO. Very important. Very important in the European Union. Very important in other geographies as well. And. Um, um, as as Spiros explained, there's um, enabler enabler two in the mission ocean, which has to do with uh, citizen um, mobilization, with citizen engagement, and there are two open calls that have to do with exactly that. Uh, the first one uh, is called "Choose Your Fish," a campaign for responsible consumption of products from the seas, a coordination support action. It relates to the taste of the ocean initiative. I don't know if you have seen that. There have been, there's been, um, it's an initiative that um, includes a lot of uh, media, a lot of uh, social media as well about um, food from the ocean, uh, either aquaculture or seafood. Uh, there are also other initiatives that uh, this call uh, relates to as regards sustainable seafood and aquaculture products. Um, and uh, what it has to do is um, it's actually creating media campaigns, tools, uh, other types of initiatives that are very creative, that are related to the creative industries. And it aims at citizens' mobilization so that they make responsible choices when it, has, uh, when it comes to the seasonality of fishes. So um, what fish is uh, should be fished at which season, the size of fishes, uh, fish population decline, the stocks are declining, especially in the Mediterranean, the sustainability of fishing techniques. The budget is 2 million approximately with one uh, number of grant to be uh, funded. Um, the next one, the ocean waters and the arts, um, is again a coordination and support action. Um, it has to do with the contribution of the creative sectors to uh, the ocean, um, the mission ocean and waters. And uh, it's again a creative industry uh, project uh, and uh, is very much related to enabler to citizen mobilization and engagement. So the aim is to stimulate the citizens' interest in and fascination by oceans and waters, 
to boost interest in working in the blue economy, to engage in ocean and water management and protection in blue research innovation. And uh, it's also um, a way to uh, raise awareness among citizens, among stakeholders about the challenges and the pressures faced by the ocean and inland waters. And all this by mobilizing the artistic communities. It could be the visual arts, the literary arts, performing arts, architects, all the creative industries. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really fascinated with these two calls. Um, and um, the budget for this uh, is approximately the same as uh, with the uh, Choose Your Fish campaign, uh, 2 million euros and one grant will be given. Um, as, uh, as both of the says and Spiro said, um, the, the call, the mission ocean is related to other, um, to other missions as well. And there are two calls, uh, till September, uh, 20th that are related, uh, they're a uh, joint calls. So there's this, uh, Klima Ocean Soil call. It's a joint one. Uh, it's the mission climate adaptation, mission ocean and waters and mission soil. Uh, call for a demonstration, a joint one, of an integrated approach to increasing landscape water retention capacity at a regional scale. Uh, this is this is a big project. Uh, only one um, grant will be given. The budget is approximately 15 million euros. And this has to do with adaptation to um, the climate change mission. Uh, objectives to support uh, demonstrations of climate uh, resilience. Um, it relates to the Mission Ocean Objective 1 to protect and restore marine and freshwater ecosystems and biodiversity and prevent eliminate pollution. And the Mission of Soil uh, deal um, and the groundwater objective and biodiversity strategy. So get familiarized with the missions, get familiarized with the groundwater directive the strategies, if this is uh, what you plan to do. And this is an interesting call because um, um, it's, uh, it includes um, uh, environmental sciences, engineering, and it also includes uh, sociology. So it's um, a socio-ecological approach to increase the landscape and soil water uh, retention, but it's also focusing on nature-based solutions, which is um, which is um, uh, solutions that are now starting to to really emerge in Europe, um, for especially for water and waste waste management, very important. So if if this is what you're doing, this is if you're in you know water waste management. Um, this might be a really nice call for you. The second call, um, the second joint call, uh, is uh, a joint call between the Mission Ocean and the Mission uh, a Soil Deal for Europe. And it has to do with um, demonstrations uh, for solutions for nutrient pollution in landscape river sea system in the Mediterranean Sea Basin. It's an innovation action. Uh, there will be two grants that will be funded. Uh, the budget is approximately uh, 16 million euros. As you as you see, it relates to a lot of uh, of strategies, to a lot of initiatives in in the European um, Union, uh, including the EU deal, uh, EU Green Deal, the Farm to Fork strategy, biodiversity strategy, um, and this is. Um, this also relates to the to the lighthouse. Um, it's the Mediterranean lighthouse, and it has to um, uh, the the projects have to actually develop demonstration activities in three different member states or associated countries, and it has to be done at the level of territorial units. That is a region, uh, a rural area, uh, and to demonstrate the um, the solutions. So um, I think this is it from my side. I don't know if it's been too boring or too, too detailed, but the thing remains that, and I will go back to the start of my presentation. Um, excuse me. The deadline is very, very soon. The themes and the teams should be um, interdisciplinary. 
uh, have in mind that this, the project, the, the idea that you are building should be replicable in other geographies and it could be scaled up, involve as many stakeholders, as many communities, as many young people as possible, have big ambitions, have a realistic budget. As you see, the budgets are big, but uh, since one or two um, grants will be given, you should be having a big team. Uh, have a great narrative, see the scope of, of work, and please do include gender. The gender element is really important. So this is it from me. Uh, I know that this will be given uh, to, to participants. Um, I, can, I can be reached uh, at this email, and um, I don't know if we have any questions, or if I have bored you to death and you have all left. No way, not at all. We're always here. We are there <laughs> We're here, okay. Christina. And there are actually some uh, questions and some uh, interesting uh, uh, ones. Uh, so uh, we'll. I can I can read the questions okay. for you. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So, so we have one from Professor Giroy. So uh, back in 2022, we completed an Erasmus Plus youth project called Gastrofish on the selection of seafood and its healthy cooking techniques. I'm interested in the project Choose Your Fish. Can you give more information about this project call? So as I said, uh, all the information can be, um, uh, can be accessed through the tender um the calls and tender uh, platform of the european union again this is um uh, c uh, c s a uh, action this is this has to do a, a lot with citizen engagement and if you have uh, if you have already finished the project which is very similar to the one with um uh, the choose your fish campaign this this is certainly a project for you because it builds on the um, the idea of sustainable consumption and production of uh, of uh, sea products, um, uh, seafood products, uh, and aquaculture products. So uh, this is a this is a call that is approximately two two million euros. Uh, it's a lot of uh, media. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, media activities in this. So you should be teaming up with, um, I don't know, a big media production company um, for the campaign in different languages, a lot of social media. Um, and this is, I think this is very interesting because it is the uh, enabler, enabler too of the, of the mission, the citizen engagement and citizen um, mobilization in practice. Um, the next one is, uh, does build upon existing knowledge systems mean that we should get partners from this project or does it simply mean we should use our outputs or as inputs? Um, it actually means both. I mean, if you could have partners from uh, such projects, uh, it builds a very strong uh, consortium, in my opinion, but uh, it doesn't mean that this is obligatory or this is mandatory you can uh, build on the knowledge that has been produced from other projects as long as you know um and these these are very uh very well articulated in the scope of each call which uh which you know um project you should be looking at uh, as Odysseus and uh, Spiro said uh, look at Cordis look at the mission uh, platform there are a lot of projects you can you know you can take the data you can take the knowledge that has been produced and build on that to uh to produce um uh, and to develop your own proposal, but also make sure that you know the the knowledge that you will also be producing through your uh, your project will be given will be uh, will be having an impact after uh, you co conclude your project. Uh, uh, there is a third question. Sorry, Considering... Sorry, yes. uh, Sorry. So Spiros uh, nodding and moving his head. So I would oh. like to get from his side also on that question on Sorry. whether we should uh, get partners from these projects or we should do something else with any other projects or related results? Spiro? No, I, I would have a preference. I think that getting partners from these projects is not a bad thing. It's, a, it's very good if you can get in touch and, and see how you, know, you can uh, go in this direction. It's definitely good. I 
I wouldn't draw the line anywhere. I mean, good participation, good projects and stakeholders involvement is always good. So, you know, um, <laughs> I would be open to anything. Perfect. Thank you for that. Christina, back to you. Okay, so third question. Um, so considering the closed deadline, yes, the deadline is very close. If you think that um, uh, July and August are very slow month, month in terms of, um, or vacation months in some countries. So considering the closed deadline and your emphasis or uh, interdisciplinary uh, collaboration, what do you recommend for finding some collaborator collaborators from either Turkey or the EU? Uh, so as as I said, there are so many fora, so many communities. Uh, there's the Blue Economy Forum. There's the Blue Economy Observatory. There's the EU Ocean Decade Initiative. Um, there's so many. Um, there's the MSP um, Forum, the Marine Special Planning Forum. There are a lot of forum and initiatives. The Blue Invest one. There are a lot of. Um, Mm, fora from uh, from the European Union and other um, and other um, geographies that uh, that you can uh, be part of. The mission charter uh, is one that you can get collaborators. Uh, that you can get you know the full spectrum of um, of you know research centers, academia, um, NGOs, um, uh, citizens, clusters. Um, uh, you know, ports, uh, ports associations. Um, so you could actually get in touch with them uh, through this forum, through these communities, and find um, appropriate uh, partners for for your consortium. And there's still time. I mean, it's uh, although the the calls have uh, have opened some months ago. There's it's uh, September twentieth. There's still time to build a good consortium. There's still time to build a a good um, proposal. Okay, thank you, Christina. That I have then uh, one more question from my side. In uh, in the calls, we've seen that there are a lot of uh, EU policies that. Uh, funding projects people have to support. So what is your tip, your advice regarding those policies? We go through them, any ideas how we can support them specifically when in some courts we have to consider something like more than uh, 10 policies yeah. related uh, to that call. So any well, advice that would be extremely useful. <laughs> Well, there's there's a lot um, there there are a lot of policies, a lot of strategies, a lot of initiatives. But to start with, these policies are all interrelated. So I would say that everything falls under the umbrella of the EU Green Deal, and then uh, everything is connected to each other. So the the biodiversity strategy is connected to the sustainable blue economy or to the um, to the uh, nature restoration law uh, or to climate laws in member states so uh, these are not these are not in vacuum or uh, you know in silo um, and do not you know communicate with each other uh, but there's a lot of overlap in the policies i would say choose the project choose the call that you're more um, interested in applying and then uh, you you know, skim through the strategies, see what these are about, uh, get acquainted with them. And these are strategies that are not going to go away in one or two years' time. These are uh, strategies that will be there. Uh, they're funding strategies and initiatives initiatives for the European Union. So uh, do your homework. This will become this will come in handy for other proposals as well, and um, and see what uh, uh, and see how you could uh, relate and. Um, them to the to the proposal and the narrative that you're building. I'm not sure if there's like an observatory of all the policies that are related to the mission ocean or to climate change. Uh, but I mean, some of them are very basic, like the Paris Agreement. Uh, this is uh, this is a um, you know uh, an international uh, treaty convention that you know. I'm, I'm sure you have uh, heard of so or the EU Green Deal, uh, but uh, keep abreast of you know of what what is happening. Um, 
uh, because there's a lot of new legislation coming in. Uh, maybe you, you know, maybe you could also relate relate to something that is now happening. So for the digital twin of the ocean, uh, like uh, there's a law, there's a new law that is now being discussed at the European Parliament level on AI. So this could also be something that you should include in your proposal if you're dealing with uh, the DTO, for instance. Excellent. So uh, in order to make it a little bit break it down into more clear steps, um, uh, in general, the policies, the strategies that are mentioned in calls, uh, we have to consider and explain how we're going to support them in the excellence section or in the impact section, to your view. And uh, I'm saying that because in the impact section, we have to be quite quantified how we're going to measure the impact that we have to achieve. So I don't know how, how challenging or how possible that is regarding those policies. I would say to both, I would say uh, um, include them in both sections. When it comes to the impact section, uh, when you have, you know, KPIs, when you have, you know, uh, first of all, you should be monitoring anything you're doing. So if you, you know, if you're doing the fish, um, the fish campaign, uh, choose your fish campaign, uh, you should have very strict KPIs, you know, how many people you're going to, to reach out to, how many people, how many communities, how many young people you're going to, to involve. Uh, but other than that, apart from the monitoring that should be in place anyways, you should be looking into um, how many, uh, the, the exact KPIs or the exact uh, goals and objectives of such strategies. So for instance, in the Mission Ocean, um, the lighthouses, uh, when it comes to the um, to uh, decreasing pollution in the Mediterranean, there's some, there's some numbers there, decrease, uh, uh, pollution, um, marine pollution uh, by 50% by then, or a decrease 30% of microplastics in the Mediterranean. So have those in mind and actually involve them, include them in the in the impact section um, in a way, um, integrating them with your KPIs if this is possible. But uh, all, the, all the strategies, all the all the initiatives by the EU that is, and the policies that are being mentioned, um, you have to show how you are going to implement it, how uh, you're going to support the implementation, how you're going to support, for instance, mainstreaming the, the Mission Ocean um, Charter. So um, it, it should be there in other parts of the, of the proposal as well not just the, you know, the excellence or just the impact. It should be, you know, if you can include it, you know, a little uh, line somewhere, I think it, uh, it will also make your um, narrative more coherent. Perfect. Thank you, Christina Matt. Thank you. Excellent. Um, uh, although we have both Cecilia and Irini on board, uh, I suggest we have a break. A short break, if that is okay for everyone, I guess. Um, but um, Min, uh, while we're supposed to start the session at uh, four o'clock on Prep for Blue, I would like to ask Celine or, or Igor to um, to display the um, the slide that we would like to see in which uh, um, whether the participants are already active in proposals under the mission or not yet. So let's have a break, if that is okay for you, uh, for uh, up to uh, Turkish time, uh, uh, four o'clock, for a little bit less than 10 minutes, eight or so. And meanwhile, I would like to ask uh, Celine or Iga to present and give on, uh, on the shared screen, the Slido. Paul, this one here, and we would like to know uh, how many of you are already involved already in the proposal under the mission Ocean, and how many of you not yet? So it's yes or no, not maybe. So it's either you are involved in a proposal, and you're working with partners, you are writing the proposal, you're establishing your consortium already, or you have no involvement at all yet, because that will be useful also from the presentation that I'm going to do afterwards. Uh, 
So let's have a break in a while uh, until uh, four o'clock and we will be back. Thank you for that.
Welcome back, Nicholas. Well, welcome back, everyone. Thank you for the ones that uh, completed the poll. However, this is a limited number of 15. We are uh, more than 70 participants. So please let us know. Um, uh, I will ask you also in my presentations to do so. So the ones that haven't uh, responded, please do so that you will respond to have as, as good representation as possible. And now, without further ado, I would like to invite um, Cecile and Irini to give us uh, their uh, presentation on uh, PrEP for Blue project. Cecile and, and um, Irini, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nikos. Hi, everybody. So uh, I'm still together with Irini. We are uh, co-managing the PrEP for Blue project. Uh, we have our project coordinator, Natalia, that couldn't join, unfortunately. Uh, so without further ado, let's move forward. Uh, so uh, Prep for Blue is a project that started in June 2022. It's a coordination and support action that will last until May 2025. The coordinator is Ephraim Air. Uh, we have 17 partners uh, in eight different countries going from uh, research institutions to SMEs, uh, international organizations, and um, also uh, research networks. Then, uh, so our objective, our main aim is to facilitate a successful, I don't know where it's springing. <laughs> it's to facilitate the successful first phase of the uh, mission by developing the co-creation and complementation research and um, innovation uh, required to achieve the mission objectives and also to prepare the ground for inspiring and engaging citizens and stakeholders at the mission and for the scaling up uh, phase of the mission in the second phase. So the mission is all about uh, a change of uh, paradigm in the scientific approach. Uh, the idea is uh, to co-create and complement uh, the research uh, in order to have a real impact. So it's co-creating with the stakeholders. Um, it's also creating an engagement at a national, regional and local levels, as well as synergies among the different contributors of the, of the mission. Uh, and we also have um, the aspect of uh, the lighthouse. So the lighthouse is, is a, uh, the idea behind is to create a new ecosystem of stakeholders in each passings. So as told before uh, by the other panelists, uh, there are uh, four different lighthouses currently. Um, and this Prep for Blue, uh, it's mainly uh, divided in six uh, work packages. So the two first one are more overarching. So we have the coordination and the synergies and also um, evolving. A, also, we also have the communication of the mission, creating a mission narrative, uh, a website also dedicated to the mission with, um, with presentations and so on. We have four core uh, work packages. So we have work package three about citizen participation, how to engage citizens in the mission. We have uh, a work package about knowledge management and knowledge transfer, how to transfer the, the solutions that are created and uh, bring them at a, a more larger scale. We have also a part on um, so business and regulation in order to uh, enable uh, um, a good environment to implement the mission. And the last one is the work package on stakeholder engagement. So how to involve stakeholders in, um, in, the, in the mission. Uh, our main outcomes are to have uh, synergies between the mission governance and also stakeholders, having inspiring and innovative communication to engage the stakeholders, uh, have a database of projects and innovation solutions uh, and digital tools to create uh, knowledge management management uh, and transfer for the mission, um, implementing recommendations for the creation of an enabling regulatory and financial environment for the mission, and uh, a series of tools, guidelines, trainings, help desks, and so on for the, and uh, also for pilots tests uh, for testing the methodologies that we've implemented and co-created. 
Um, we have different collaborations uh, that are possible uh, with the current uh, ongoing project, but also with the different uh, future projects. So the co-creation and implementation of methodologies, uh, mainly uh, for citizens' uh, participation. So for that, we have David White. Then we have also uh, pilots uh, and stakeholders assemblies and tools and methodologies to be tested. That's headed by uh, Massimiano. Uh, and developing a knowledge ecosystem and eco innovative communication acti activities. Of course, Prep for Blue is not alone in this whole mission ecosystem. Prep for Blue is uh, an interaction both with the mission implementation platform, but also with the Besson CSAs. So uh, between Prep for Blue and the Besson CSAs, we have shared database of some of the CSAs. Uh, we have also synergies in terms of uh, project governance, methods, tools, stakeholder assemblies, and communication. We have an in interaction with the Mebotion, uh, so it's like uh, co-creating a um, community of practice for the moment, mainly on uh, communication and uh, citizen implementation, but other are ongoing. And of course, the mission implementation platform has also uh, synergies and uh, interaction directly with the best in CSAs. The best in CSAs don't represent the whole lighthouses, of course, so they're interacting with the other projects that are existing. So innovation action, research and innovation ones, H2022 um, and so on. They're also collaborating with existing governance structures um, and the different regions, and they're also involving uh, stakeholders and citizens. Uh, so, uh, for the moment, we have already several tools and resources that are um, available for uh, current people involved in the project, but also future projects that want to be involved in, in, the, in the mission. So, the first one we have is uh, the Mission Ocean Digital Academy. So, it's um, a tool created to help develop digital communication skills to extend the reach of the mission message. Uh, it will help uh, in better communicating uh, the actions done by the different um, stakeholders and so on across different, um, across the different channels. Uh, we have several social medias also. Um, then another um, communication resource we have is the mission website that should be launched uh, in September. So in this one, uh, we have um, different interviews of uh, stakeholders involved at the different lighthouses, um, expressing their um, experience and how they were involved in the missions and so on. Um, they also, it's also going to be launched a youth campaign with uh, mobile journalists uh, pretty soon also. So they will join different mission events to report on what is happening. Then uh, we recently had a series of uh, five one-hour webinars. So they ended last uh, week. However, the recordings will be available on our website by uh, the end of June. Uh, these webinars were aimed to learn how to design a project, work package and programs in alignment with the citizens' engagement targets of the missions. Um, so there were five of them. So we had citizen participation, increasing the social inclusion, uh, citizen science, community-based social marketing and working with European Solid Solidarity Corps, which is uh, mentioned in most of the calls of uh, the mission. Then we have uh, on top of uh, this uh, webinar series, there was a toolbox that was created for um, citizen engagement. Uh, so this one is already already available on the website. Uh, so it's um, a tool to how to uh, how to integrate and implement um, collaboration with uh, with citizens. So we go through uh, the typology of citizen participation. When do we involve citizens? which citizens, why do you involve them, uh, when one do you want to involve them, how to involve them step by step, uh, also some examples of spe specific citizen engagements, and uh, some um, examples of uh, citizen participations in the, in the mission. Um, then uh, we have uh, another part, so it's more on the stakeholder engagements uh, in the mission. So we have two uh, tools that are going to be developed. We will have uh, the guidelines that's uh, on how to engage stakeholder uh, in the missions. The guidelines will be released normally by end of the summer. 
And we will also have an online toolkit uh, in which we have between 30 and 50 identif identified stakeholder engagement methods. Uh, each of these methods will have an individual fact sheet um, with the description, the target, the scope, the strength and weaknesses of each of these um, methods, uh, previous use cases also, so that you can have previous examples. Uh, that one is uh, planned to be released by um, uh, autumn of this year. We also have um, a mission database and knowledge transfer tools that have been developed. So there's database of project and innovation solution that's ongoing. Uh, we have a mission ontology uh, for harmonization and interoperability of data information that should come out this summer and also implementation of best practices knowledge management systems. Uh, then we have um, also uh, um, on how to enable uh, the mission uh, environment, uh, which are the requirements needed on the regulatory and economic perspective. So for this, there was a benchmark overview of existing business models that respond to the, to the mission um, objectives. There was also an analysis that has been done of the most pertinent uh, of the funding gaps uh, for a scaling solution and also a mapping of the existing uh, policies and regulations uh, with that answer to the mission ob objectives and how to use them and how to uh, a, um, how to enforce these regulatory incentives. Uh, we have Currently, also uh, an ongoing um, survey that's um, targeted for uh, the um, regional authorities and know how they're uh, involved in the in the mission uh, and, and assess uh, their their priorities. So uh, the survey is still open and will be open until beginning mid of July. Uh, each region is welcome to to answer and all this. Um, Answers will then be compiled and uh, and um, showcased. Then, uh, of course, as told previously by the other panelists, there is the mission charter. So uh, the mission charter is uh, for you to to show your support to the mission. As um, how do you how do you support the mission? Which uh, if you're involved in projects. Uh, which um, objective are you answering to it? And so on for that, we have created um, guidelines and resources on how to um, uh, create your pledge. So we have uh, templates that are available also, and then you can, of course, um, showcase uh, your pledging. Uh, just for information, uh, when you pledge, it's each pledge is evaluated by the commission. So it's the pledge won't appear directly then on the on the commission website, but it's just because it's it's it's reviewed. Um, you can of course meet the the partners of the Prep for Blue Consortium in the, the following uh, events. So uh, we have people going to the seminar on fisheries and science, so citizen fisheries in Brussels. Uh, we have uh, partners uh, that are going to be there at the Galway Statement event in Ireland in the beginning of July. Uh, we have partners also being in uh, the Euro Ocean Conference and uh, in Vigo. And we also have uh, the Mission Arena um, so in uh, of uh, the Baltic and North Sea that's going to happen in Gothenburg in Sweden. That one is headed by the Blue Mission Banos, uh, and they're of course going to be representative of uh, of Prep for Blue that's going to be there. Uh, I think I went a bit fast. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can, uh, if you have any question, uh, don't hesitate to to contact us. Uh, either Natalia, the coordinator, uh, Irini, or myself, we're available for uh, answering uh, any questions. And yes, I'm not sure how to pronounce your first name. Od Odysseus, is it so? <laughs> I see your hand raised. Uh... I apologize, it's by mistake. Thank you for the wonderful presentation, <laughs> uh, nevertheless. <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, we may have some questions from uh, our participants. We don't have questions, but um, I hope we, yeah, probably will receive, you know. If 
I may um, recapitulate. Yes. Yes. Um, because now we have the open calls and it's very close, the deadline, the 20th of September, around that date. So, um, Cecile, if you understand well, based from the Prep for Blue platform, mm -hmm. what, what the current applicants can do, and help me uh, or correct me if this is not the case, you have already a, um, regarding citizen engagement, which is a prerequisite in many open calls, a webinar, how to do that, as a, well as a toolbox, as well as a toolkit on how to do that with examples. So if uh, uh, you, there are applicants here that are planning to involve, to participate in those mission open calls, they definitely need to check that material for doing so. So that's yes. one point that I have. The second one is that you have already been creating a database of projects that are related to the mission objectives. Mm -hmm. And this is, I guess, also extremely interesting because for applicants, because uh, most of the calls, current calls, are requesting to collaborate and see how you're going to exploit um, initiatives and solutions from other pro pro projects. Therefore, uh, having access to that database, it will be extremely useful and, in a, I believe, in a user-friendly way to identify current initiatives and see how you can collaborate uh, with. And the third element that I have is that you have already some uh, support schema for uh, showing how to support the regulatory, the compliance of some uh, policies, as well as ideas of some business models that applicants can support in order to uh, advance uh, mission objectives. Is that correct or I've uh, misunderstood that? It's uh, it's correct uh, for the business and regulatory. It's uh, still working progress though. So it's uh, some of them have already been delivered, but we're not allowed to share. However, all participants can contact the um, the leaders of the work package, so which is Alberto, uh, for any questions they they have also. So. Okay, so they can contact you because we have the email addresses here from. Uh, yeah. You can direct them to the work package leader that can see whether they can give them some uh, uh, draft, if possible, of the public deliverables. And can they do the same also with the stakeholder? Um, uh, you have also a stakeholder uh, toolkit, but that will be due October of 2023 uh, for engagement of stakeholders, not only citizens, but engagement mm -hmm. of other stakeholders. So that will be uh, again available in October, which is unfortunately after the call deadline. So can some uh, of potential applicants contact you and through you, the work package leader to see what else can be used? Yes, it's possible. Uh, the stakeholder engagement tool, a guideline, uh, we aim for um, end of August. Uh -huh. uh, so we hope it it's will be. Uh, the toolkit, so the online tool, uh, that's for uh, end of September, October. So it's if they contact, we can, see with the with the work package leads that we can share and also with our project officer uh, that's that's not a problem yes Irini. <laughs> yeah <clears throat> hi everyone so if i may add here just a few uh, small details uh, as you understand prefer blue is the overarching csa that really develops methods and tools to support uh, the big family of the mission so it's been uh, a year that we are running uh, the first uh, couple of months uh, were really trying to understand the landscape that is uh, is a lot of co-creation and co-development at the moment the the the mission family is is like quite uh, quite organized and we do have some synergies so to go back to refer to your the tools that you just mentioned and Rika, like uh, re summarized nico um as part of this uh, as far as the stakeholder engagement tool uh, we are holding a workshop where most of these methods will be tested by relevant stakeholders and validated and and uh, and create specific recommendations for for people and for projects that they are are looking to engage with stakeholder towards the objectives in each each lighthouse. So it will be quite uh, tailor made and fine tuned, and will be embedded with our our database. So the database uh, um, offers uh, let's say uh, a panorama of all the projects that they are relevant and contributes uh, to the objectives. At the same time, it offers a space of networking where uh, different stakeholders can contact each other and understand uh, how can they link or uh, 
and also understand how they can use the resources of different projects that have been already developed. Uh, and of course, all the, the methods will be there showcased um, and, and, and then uh, where each method has been used and, and what were the main take home messages uh, will be also showcased in, in this uh, database. Perfect. Thank you, Irene, for that. That was very useful. Speaking of database, I think we have a question in the chat box. Um, is there any authentication to access the project database? This is the question. From It's not online yet, but from my understanding, there would be kind of an authentication, but not um, limited, we're going to say. It's just that we it won't be completely open, but you just need to register yourself, and then you will have full access. Is okay. that correct, Irene? Yeah, exactly. There will be some uh, logging details, um, as, um, especially where there are spaces where we like where where there could be feedback, networking, or or evaluation of the methods or of the projects uh, is related. Then most probably the logging will be there to to make sure of the quality of the feedback received and also to track down uh, who will be the one giving this feedback in order to be able to be contacted. Uh, uh, but also the same will be for the digital uh, academy. So all, all the space that is dedicated to um, a self-learning, self-paced learning, self -paced learning um, environment where where people that they are engaged with the Mission Ocean can can learn how to use in the best way uh, the social media channel. But not only, and and they will have some templates and some resources already available for them. Um, of course, that is like reserved uh, as a logging, and then it will be reserved for for uh, the projects that coming coming after us. Uh, so you really have to be involved in order to access that. But yeah, we will we it will be a hybrid. Just to to summarize, uh, most of it will be publicly available. But then when there is more interaction and more uh, data input, then that will be kind of protected with the logging. And do you facilitate the communication uh, with identified projects, either through a contact form or through uh, a matchmaking uh, activity? That's, uh, yeah, it's uh, with our um, work package lead, so Wendy from uh, KDM, that's going to help facilitate the communication aspects of everything related to the missions and the project and so on. Uh, we're not alone though, so uh, we're involved in a communication collaborative uh, community that's headed by the Mission Ocean uh, implementation platform and which platform Boo is involved. So yes, there is, there's going to be help uh, on that side. And just to add up, I'm not sure if uh, Nikos, you were thinking more of, so of matchmaking of projects that they will be showcased in the database. Um, there is not exactly a matchmaking platform, but what uh, will be existing there is really um, knowledge push, targeted knowledge push. So we, uh, uh, from all projects that they will be listed in our, our database, uh, scalable solutions that they are high in TRL level and they are ready to be deployed into the, to the different lighthouses. Uh, are already being contacted, and then uh, the the knowledge that we we receive will be evaluated and targeted, uh, send it on a targeted way, let's say, to uh, policy, and then the uptaking. Uh, if that's what you were thinking. However, uh, what will be coming later on at the towards the end of the project is more of a matchmaking events between um, um, uh, businesses and and uh, startups that they are um are they are let's say ready to to be engaged and then uh, contribute to the objectives with the funding mechanism that's what we are trying to facilitate with the work package five okay anything of those is more than welcome so that's fine all right i don't see any further questions so i we can go on with my presentation then okay yeah, Yes, if that is okay. So thank you, Cecile. Thank you, Irini, for this presentation of Prep for Glue. It was really interesting and I'm sure very useful even for participants that are preparing now their proposals. So what I will uh, do is I will uh, share also the screen.
So the topic, okay, we've seen uh, some interesting calls, a lot of calls with a lot of budget, uh, budget uh, quite challenging. So the idea now is uh, what we're going to do with this. And um, in that context, we would like to know, and that's why we asked you uh, to know how many of you, you are already involved in a proposal under the mission call or uh, how many you haven't, but you would like to. So it's a yes or no. So I would like again to ask Celine or Uga to give us, to share with, uh, on the screen, instead of my PowerPoint, the, the slide or slide that we can see how many have uh, already been involved in a proposal under Mission Ocean and how many they haven't. The last time that we checked before the break, oh, a little bit more than 15 people have answered. So I would like um, Celine and uh, Uga to share the slide. I think he is already displaying, but uh, since your is on. I can stop sharing. So. Uh, no, no, uh, can you see it? Because I can. This well, is your screen. I can see because I stopped sharing. So, yes. Yes, so. We've seen that, okay, 24, around um, uh, one fourth of the participants uh, a little bit uh, uh, answered. So 92%, it's no, 8%, it's uh, yes. So it's clear that uh, the majority of the participants here are not yet involved in any proposal under uh, Mission Ocean Code. So that's fine, it's good to know that. And if you would like to complete further that poll, that will be more than uh, uh, great. Let me share again um, the slide and go back to my presentation then. And having that uh, in, uh, in mind. Okay. So that's great. Because it allows us to uh, proceed. And what I can say, for the ones that they answered, no, we're not involved in any mission... Uh, uh, ocean mission call proposal yet. My advice is not to initiate a proposal as leaders. It's too late now. The deadline is 20th of September around that date. So we have also summer holidays. A lot of actors will be away for their um, vacations. So it's, uh, it's uh, extremely challenging for someone to initiate a proposal. It's not of course, it's possible, but it's extremely challenging for someone to initiate a proposal now to start from scratch. Therefore, uh, um, there are some other, other practical steps that you have to do on that. The ones that are already initiating a proposal, first of all, you've seen a lot of tips in this uh, training. You've seen a lot of uh, tools also from uh, Prep for Blue. You've seen tips from uh, Christina, from uh, Spiros, from uh, Odyssea. So we, you have now a lot of uh, information that you need to transform into knowledge on how to write your uh, existing proposals that you are involved, how to add value to the proposals that you are already involved. However, there are, uh, we need to consider also not only the 8% of the ones that responded, but the 92% of the others that are not involved any pro in any proposal yet. So we need to give practical steps to everyone in our audience. So in my presentation here, I have two parts. The first part uh, is dealing on uh, how to build your uh, assets your, and adding value to your profile. And as soon as you do that, which shouldn't take that much time, then some techniques that uh, you have to master in order to identify and engage with uh, potential uh, uh, with potential actors, potential actors that are initiating a proposal already in uh, a mission call. Because we have to be pragmatic. If you haven't started be writing a proposal so far or being a part of it, what you should be aiming from now on is to enhance your profile and identify proposal opportunities for uh, joining on board. 
And these are the two parts that we're going to discuss in, uh, in this like, half an hour. So the first part on the profile intelligence, how to build your assets at time value. First of all, I would like you to um, uh, start, even if you are at this stage, to connect with uh, European Commission uh, uh, policy officers behind the targeted call uh, that you're highly interested in. In which call you're interested in? It depends on the keywords that um, are in the call and the keywords of your own expertise. You do a little bit of mapping, you see which ones are, are the ones that are aligned or you can add value based on your expertise. So you have identified out of those uh, uh, calls that Christina presented, the ones, one or two or maximum three that you should be highly, highly interested in. But now what you need to do is I would like you and I suggest you to uh, try to connect with some easy policy officers behind uh, those calls, because that will be an asset. Being in the connection with an easy policy officer is an asset while you will be connecting and uh, trying to convince someone to take you on board to have that uh, and many and uh, four more assets in your Faretra, in, um, in, uh, your, por in your portfolio of, uh, of expertise and value. So the best way to understand and, and identify policy officers is from the info dividends. I think in April, or uh, I think in April uh, this year, we had the info days of all the mission calls. Therefore, uh, we had uh, policy officers from the European Commission presented all the mission calls, including the OSEAN mission ones. So what actually I would like you to do and as a step is uh, check the Horizon Europe uh, info days on, uh, uh, on mission call and check the info day agenda. I mean, uh, yes, we had the Ocean mission info day on the 18th of uh, uh, January. This is the call link that you can find out more information. So you don't even have to do step one, Google, but uh, go directly to that link. And from there, normally what is a practice that we advise you to do is to check who are the speakers, either from the agenda, which is very rare, but at least who speaks from uh, the recorded version on behalf of the European Commission. Normally the ones that are presenting are policy officers, and these are the ones that you are strongly uh, recommended to connect so. So if you do that, so if you go to the info day, if you check on that link that we have uh, here, so let me use the pen. So if you go to that link here, you click on it, uh, you will see the videos. You need to spend some time watching the videos. Then uh, you will see who will be presenting each call um, that uh, from mission. So we have now the moderator was Michaela Zigli, but uh, these uh, uh, five uh, uh, EC police officers from the European Commission, Marcin Sadowski, Eduardo Casarotto, Ropeta, Jopi, Zoe Constantino, and Claudia Pecoraro uh, were the ones that were presenting specific uh, ocean mission calls. So what you need now, record the name, you have already recorded the name, try to uh, create an email address, something like firstname.lastname at ec.europa.eu. So that's a convention that for email addresses, if they are from Portugal or from Spain, then that they have two surnames. So you have first name, dot last name, uh, minus second last name at ec.europa.eu. So you play a little bit around. So you, you should be able, based on the full name here, to identify the email addresses. And this is your first uh, uh, starting point. Optionally, you can use the Who's Who uh, database of the European Commission. Anyone that works at the European Commission is a public servant. So they should have the phone number and the address so you search for them so you can identify and in addition to the email, have in your contact details also the address if you are ever paying a visit to Brussels or somewhere else in Central Europe that they are based or have the phone number handy in case uh, you dare enough to uh, give a, con, a phone call and find out more about the call. If they both fail, then you can always ask your national contact point and see whether they can help you more on that. So what we have so far, we have so far, we're trying to establish um, connections with the CEO policy offices behind the calls and we have identified the email address. So now that you have the email address, you need to approach them 
by email in our case. That's the first and best way. And always open your uh, introduction, uh, your introduction uh, approach message or your email with a compliment, an honest compliment, a real and complex compliment. You can follow the following structure. So you give a, an actual honest compliment, like I like your presentation, the way you answer the questions in the info day event, something that is more specific and shows that you really appreciate what they have been doing. And especially because of that, because it has to be honest. So you give your reasons why you like the presentation, why you like the way that they answer some of the questions. And then you can ask the following. Could I have just one minute of your time, even if it takes them two minutes and not one minute, say one minute, and then say, this is our proposal idea. Or do you have, you should have one rough proposal idea under the code that you're targeting. Do you think that this is relevant under this mission call that they have presented? You contact the ones that they presented the call that you're interested. So we had five EC officers, each one of them presented a, a group of calls to identify the ones that uh, presented the calls that you're interested. Um, say and make sure that you, before contacting them, you have already discussed that with um, your national contact points. So with uh, Nerve and Chinar, because uh, uh, maybe they can give you some tips, but in addition to that, you would like to establish some communication with the city police officer, so you can say that we have discussed already with our NCP, but some further direct feedback from your side will be really helpful. If you don't write that, they probably will direct you immediately to your NCP, to your national contact point, so try to have that already and be proactive. And uh, as a third element, what you should do is you could uh, ask uh, whether they have uh, any other ideas or points that you need to consider under this code. Does, the, does that a very simple email, three, four sentences, no more uh, than that. And voila, you have established already a communication with a C police officer. Now, if they reply to you with some positive feedback, that's great. Some of you will, some of you might not will reply back to you. If they haven't replied back, try to follow up. But at least what you have, you have already established a communication with the policy officers. So this is one of the assets that you keep aside in your portfolio of the high added value that you can um, uh, have. And that applies, of course, in online or in on-site communication. Now, because there aren't any other opportunities to meet with the policy officers face-to-face, -face, so we rely only on, on email and online communication. So this is, as a tip, uh, use this contact to have that as an asset to your advantage. So while you will be communicating with some key proposal initiators, tell them that you are already in communication with the C police officer, Mr. Or Mrs. that presented the call. That can uh, attract your profile and add further value. So uh, that was uh, asset one. Now we're building our assets. Asset uh, uh, two is a connection from uh, projects, base projects related to your targeted call. Uh, Christina, we've seen that presented some of the calls and we, uh, um, we, we've seen there that uh, they already mentioned some uh, specific either project names or programs that projects have been funded under. So this can be also extremely uh, useful for you. So if your call in the call description mentions already some uh, calls that you need to consider solutions from those uh, uh, projects under that program and um, uh, use them in your mission call, contact them. Why? Because even if you're initiating a proposal, most likely, these proposed project actors that uh, have already uh, been uh, implementing a project and uh, it is under the program that is already mentioned as a startup project in the call description, they should be involved in, in the mission initiative, either as associate partners or even as uh, uh, direct beneficiaries. So they should have already the connections or the knowledge to tell you uh, who is initiating a proposal that you could uh, join them. So in that um, uh, respect, uh, we have uh, here uh, an example. So I think uh, there was uh, one, uh, uh, that call here, the Horizon uh, Mission 2023 Ocean 1103. 
Atlantic and Arctic Sea Basin Lighthouse. It was presented by our, our um, uh, speakers. So uh, what you need is you need, it mentions that you need to collaborate and you need to consider solutions from uh, those type of uh, programs, projects that have been funded under those programs, Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance, uh, projects from uh, emission in 2001, uh, 2002, and 2003, as well as 2005. So projects that have already been funded under these um, uh, previous calls, uh, you need to contact them and see how you can establish uh, partnerships or any other EU program that uh, under Copernicus or Report.net or from LIFE that deals with environment or any other national or international programs. Definitely what we have, uh, we can start looking on projects that have been funded, let's say, under that, um, under that program. So for doing that, the best way to do that is to use the funding and tenders uh, uh, portal and uh, identifying it and I'm going to show you uh, if I can, because uh, the system doesn't allow me to share the, um, the, let me see, the website. Let me see if I can do that, share the screen. Advanced sharing options, we can share. So I would like to share again, but I would like to share uh, I would like to share uh, uh, Google Chrome. So now you can see Google Chrome here. So what we have is I said, go to go to that funding and tenders portal. Where the goals are <clears throat> so it's this one here. European Black Book, uh, Blue Parks. And if you go down, even though it is a closed call, eh? if you go down, further down, further down, you will see well, like here, the two projects have been funded under this call that is mentioned in the open call current in 2023. So blueprint demonstration of for co-create effective, efficient, and resilient network of MPAs. So if you click on that, you will find some uh, more information. So you keep that aside, the title, because then the blue for all, that's the whole, whole one, because then you will go to, um, I will have a new share, I will back, go back. It's, it's because I, I can share only one application per type. So you go to that, sorry. So you go to big uh, Google, and you try to identify more details about the project, the project website, and etc. And from the project website, as you go to the project website here, then you should be able to identify the project coordinator contact details, uh, send an email to, and that's important, not to ask them whether they are interested to to get you to involve you in a proposal, but ask them to, to whether they are open to have your value, to offer value in their existing project. I mean, uh, how to contribute in their running project with as a peer reviewer, contribution, uh, maybe uh, help them in the, in the newsletter with an article. Maybe you can become a member of the advisory board because the mantra of uh, networking is not ask and you shall receive, but give and you shall receive. So try to have uh, ideas of what kind of values you can offer to existing projects. Uh, maybe you can join as an associate partner. So you establish that communication uh, with them. So we have here uh, the blue for all. Sorry, we have here the blue for all. Again, um, you do the same thing, you identify the project. So I use the, um, I will have a new share. Sorry, sorry about the stop and sharing things. I mean, I don't know, I have to share now. 
then the web thing. So, Glue for All, I use Google, I use the title, I found it. Yes. Then uh, you look around where the partners, you look in publications, uh, you look in the newsletter or something else. And I hope now that you can see here, I find the name of Mr. Stephen Dierer, the project coordinator of the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences. That uh, then uh, you go to Google, Big Brother, you ask them, okay, can you give me the email address of Stephen Dierer that works at Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences? And there you are, you will have the email address. You contact them. You see how you can add value to the Blue for All uh, project. And then when you have one or two exchange of emails, then see whether they are involved in any other currently or proposal for the calls that are open for 2023 and ask whether you can contribute some value. So that's your, your second element of work that um, you can do. So I will stop sharing that again, and I will go back with my presentation, and I promise that will be the last thing that I will be doing, exchanging to apps. So I've shown you how to, how to identify potential key actors in open calls through an example uh, for, uh, for Blue for All. And the other thing is that uh, so far we see that you can add value with connection with EC Polish officer, the other one is that you can uh, uh, say that you are involved with uh, uh, actors that are mentioned, uh, uh, with actors that are involved in projects that are mentioned in the call that you're interested in. So that's another asset. The third asset is that I would like you and I suggest you to work on is how to uh, connect with key players, key actors. These were mentioned also from uh, uh, Spiros. Uh, uh, all, um, who are the key actors that we would like to see in missions like policy makers, end users, big research institutions or industry, or even citizens. So that will be your asset uh, uh, three that you have. So these are the key actors that we have in our uh, uh, in missions. So for example, end users, as Peter also said, we have ports, cities, fleets, islands, regions, civil society, important. Then uh, don't forget policymakers and advisors. This is extremely important. Missions need to contribute to policy making. So you need to have in hand uh, uh, policymakers in connection, national ones, but uh, if possible, also European ones, let's say from the European, uh, from the European Parliament. Industry players, and you can advance some of the institutions with high value and some other actors like also, these were mentioned SMEs or even philanthropists and investors. I like that because I've seen that from the presentation that I think was made from uh, uh, Spiros on that. So uh, these are the key actors. So try to connect with them. Try to establish policy makers uh, in your networking. So you are going to add that value also in uh, when you're contacting uh, someone. And um, so uh, what you need is uh, you need to be able from this uh, networking to be able to invite some of those uh, key actors in any proposal that you are involved, uh, preferably as an associate partner. What an associate partner means, associate partner means someone that contributes uh, with value, contributes in kind, but not necessarily receives funding from the project. If they insist some of them to have funding, then you negotiate that with the coordinator and you see how that could be possible. So you have now that as a third asset. And the other one is always, but always volunteer to uh, contribute in uh, proposal writing. Expect to always volunteer to write some of the sections in the grant application. And um, a very nice tip on how to do that, how to transform a caterpillar into a beautiful butterf butterfly is, first of all, you need to give some suggestions uh, uh, on the proposal writing team. Okay, is the coordinator with clear tasks? Are they uh, assessing the contributions? Have they allocated who writes what? Then the proposal writing team, who is who and who, what they write, each one of the proposal writing team members. 
Do they have a secretary, an assistant that is responsible for collecting any material, any letters of support, possibly any profile, any further studies that are needed and would like to consider? And is there an external evaluator on board for evaluating at least the final draft? Someone that hasn't been involved in the proposal preparation, but can give you an unbiased perspective and evaluation on what you need uh, to develop, to improve, what are your weak points, preferably some 10 days before the submission deadline, you can have your proposal uh, evaluated and then uh, in one or two days you will receive fruitful feedback from the evaluator to, uh, to identify the um, weak points and work on them. One week or so will be enough, I think, to work on your weaknesses that have been identified by the evaluator. And um, uh, this is what we said uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as a tip. I would like you to uh, set an internal deadline to complete the full proposal. Ask them, ask the coordinator to set an internal deadline to complete the proposal, not on 19th, if the deadline is the 20th of September, but 10 days before that. So by the 10th of September, make sure that uh, you have completed the internal deadline everyone should be ready by the 10th, then you have the luxury, the time luxury uh, to uh, have your proposal evaluated by an external to give you some, some uh, uh, feedback and then work in a week or so on those weaknesses. And apply here the Parkinson law, not the Parkinson disease. What is the Parkinson law? The less time we have, the more effective we get. So in that uh, respect, I would like everyone to tell that the deadline is not 20th, but 10th of September. So everyone will try to finish by 10th of September. Maybe some people haven't even realized that the deadline is the 20th, but <laughs> let them know that our deadline is on the 10th of September. You have some, everything ready, then you proceed with your external evaluation, then you have one week or so to work on your uh, weaknesses and get the feedback. And always upload your draft version of your proposal at least two days before the submission deadline and make sure that everything validates because if you do that the last moment, you might have some unpleasant surprises. Okay, and then the last um, thing we talked about that is uh, there is a possibility under the Turkey Horizon 2020 program, but coordinate that with your national contact point and the Turkey Horizon 2020 program, that uh, the experts that are involved in uh, the program, me and Odysseus, could evaluate some of your uh, proposals for free. And the, in the context of the Turkey and Horizon 2020 program, but coordinate that through the national contact point through uh, Merve and Sinar and, the, um, and uh, Kemal and uh, Celine and see whether that is possible. So you can use that as an asset in any proposal that you are involved. So what we have done so far, we have uh, told you some tips how to in, in, in improve, enhance your current profile. So your current uh, uh, profile, of course, ha has some experience in some research innovation elements of the, of the, um, uh, of the areas that the calls uh, require, but this is not enough because many other potential uh, beneficiaries have similar expertise like yours. So try to differenti differentiate yourself to make yourself unique. So in that respect, we've given you some tips, some practical tips and steps on how to enhance further your profile with uh, five additional assets and how to do that. So we complete then uh, the first part. And the second one, which is not that long, is okay, how to communicate, how to uh, contact and identify key actors. You've seen and I've shown you already how to identify projects that are initiating proposals possibly, how to identify the contact details from the project website through Google. We see that for, um, for a project under the mission in, 20, in 2021. And uh, as I said, you should always remember the mantra of successful networking, not ask and you shall receive, but give and you shall receive. So for anyone that you have identified as a potential actor involved in a, in a currently uh, op, uh, proposal under the mission calls, you send an email. And again, you start with an honest compliment. Congratulate them about the project that they're already involved. Explain why. Uh, also elaborate on your high interest and expertise in that key research area. Express your offer 
to get more involved in the project. We've given you some tips on that. Then uh, use any of the assets of the five assets that you have built on. It's not necessary to build on all five, but the more you build, the, most, the stronger will be the profile that you have. And uh, so you have this, and then uh, you conclude with the desire to virtually meet. As always, seek for um, not a yes or no answer whether they would like to involve you or not, but always a yes or no whether they would like to meet. And ensure you get a response. You never send an email to anyone until you're determined to get a response. Uh, so in, in some cases, that means that you need to follow up over the phone. And here is a template, but very, uh, very indicative template. So it can be a collaboration opportunity, the subject and the horizon called topic, you give the topic. And you say collaboration opportunity so to make sure that it will open, uh, because otherwise it might not be opened. So dear, his name, I am Dr. Mr. Mrs. whatever. And I decided to contact you based on your active involvement in the project name that you have identified that is related to that call, because we're working in the same area with some whatever unique knowledge, ideas, solutions, products, select whatever is applicable in your case, related to the following call under mission X, the one that you have here. We would like to discuss in a quick Zoom meeting how we can add high value and jointly submit a successful proposal in this call. Please note the following points that we believe are essential for success in this competitive call, and you apply any of the tips that you believe are applicable in your case. For asset one, we have investigated here the expectation of this call with the help also from the C project officer. Example on asset three, uh, here uh, we have, furthermore, we're already in communication with other related projects. In addition, our organization could also bring very strong end users from the X domain. Our team could provide top-notch support in the proposal preparation, also engage an experienced expert as external evaluator proposal finder with no cost from your side, something like that. I hope we will have the chance to work together and support you in the development of success proposal, etc., etc. These are the contact details, your first name, your position, and then your full name. That's it. Something like that as a starting point. Even half of it, the shorter, the better. Of course, send it and then follow up over the code. And you need to create for each one of the calls that you are interested in the related projects, create your own list of projects and identify which are the assets that you're willing to uh, contribute. So have that as part of your toolkit, in addition to the email template that you're going to work on. So you for each of the uh, project, you need to identify the contact details as email address, phone number. We've seen how that is possible. And uh, now you know how to enhance your profile and uh, how to communicate intelligently. So what is still missing is to apply that because knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. So try to work on those options from uh, this week onwards, put even today, after, after this meeting, put in your calendar when you're going to apply what you learned here from all our uh, delightful speakers, uh, the tips that they've given you, the ones that you have, you can apply now for engaging and try to engage with some potential proposal initiators because you need to, to transform the knowledge that you uh, received here into applied knowledge. So put go into action, put your in your calendar when you're going to do uh, what. And in that case, you are increasing the chances, even if you haven't been involved in any proposal so far, in, um, in any mission call, which is the majority, you increase significantly your chances of um, uh, being invited on board. And I think that's, that's, that's the end of my... Uh, presentation so it's it's almost five o'clock i don't know whether there are any questions or any closing remarks from anyone let me stop sharing the advantage of being the last one is that you might the people are so tired that you might not have any questions from their side huh?
So I would like to give the floor then to the Seas or to uh, Nerve or Tsina for the closing remarks. Merve, we cannot hear you if you speak. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's all, if, if Odysseus has something to... Uh, I just I... want to reiterate what uh, Nikos has uh, repeated and uh, Spiros and Christina. Um, I saw that uh, a lot of uh, participants do not have any plans yet. I would advise all of you who are attending this, uh, this event to start looking for consortia. Uh, the call is uh, in September. There is still time to join a strong consortium. Even if you don't have uh, uh, a defined mature ideas, try to start communicating whatever you're thinking. Try to find uh, uh, through your network a consortium where you could, you could fit. Uh, it, mission calls are indeed ambitious calls, but that does not mean that you should not try. And if, you, if you're not trying, you won't get any success. So I think that um, it's a good opportunity, uh, uh, this webinar for you to uh, get an overview of the ocean call and try to do something in it. And uh, I, I think that uh, we, we have attempted to give you uh, a good overview of the proposal of the open calls and what you should look uh, into this uh, this course. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, let me wrap up uh, from my side, from our side. Uh, thank you for all of our uh, guests for their um, valuable contribution. Uh, I just want to remind you that, as Nicolas said. Uh, we are here for you and uh, we can do uh, our best uh, during this uh, preparation period. Uh, so you can contact us whenever you want. Uh, so thank you everyone for uh, all of your uh, contribution and thanks, thank you uh, our participants uh, for your uh, time and uh, that's all, I think. Great. Keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you, Marva. <laughs> Thanks, Piros. Thank Thanks, Christina. Thank you, Cecil. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.